I'm not, no, I'm gonna stop then. I'm not saying nah. it. <laughs> oh, why not? No, no, go no, on, no, go no, on. No, yeah. no, no, no just, I won't. Just, no. Just, no. Hello, hello, chat. J- just to fill you in, I got here late because the answer to the old Doctor Zeus riddle, how can you be late because you're early, is daylight savings. I arrived here late <laughs> to find that they were talking something about clout, and then Dark Hour said something about ass fucking in curtains. We are he's not now even refusing to tell you in. what that is. Yeah. You just, you just <laughs> demonetized even, yourself. You know, oh, well. <laughs> uh, well, I'll nah, it was just, it. It was just the re-upload. It's just an infamous clip from um uh of Az from from a, a stream they did where he, like he went in on somebody that like super chatted at him. Oh. That's all it really was. It was it was okay. like the most over the top cl- uh, clip I've ever seen of him, which is saying a lot because he's that's kind of his <laughs> whole thing. <laughs> so... Oh my but god! Anyway. Well, Roadhouse. Uh... We're all back together, <laughs> and we will have our um, kind of host, the one that we, you know, he gets none of the none of the money, but he is on every <laughs> single fucking stream. Andrew will be here. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll be gone by then. So, <laughs> yeah, we can't have a beast up without Andrew. No, that's not possible. Yeah, where no. is Andrew? You know, no, I just like to point out that one classes. time he's like 21 years old. He's a child. I would just, I would just like to point out, Cynic, <laughs> that one time in the very, very early days of this show, you once said, "I would like it if I never had the same person on over and over again," and then Andrew showed up. And, and Andrew like, like, showed up, and we're like, <laughs> and he, just, he, he was just like, "I'm not going to listen to your rules, damn it." <laughs> <laughs> I just send Andrew a link and uh, yeah. see if he shows up or not. Honestly, like if he responds, yeah. I know he'll be here. But now I just know he will. Gotcha. I mean, we're not allowed to pay him, though, are we? Because child labor is child labor is illegal. So <laughs> He's a child. we actually can't. That is um, that I... is the reason. Really, we're just it's like an unpaid internship. That's what he's doing. Yeah. It's not slave labor. Yes. You could just relocate the B sub headquarters to China, and I'm sure you can work around the, the payment. Where if, unless the we just don't want to pay him, then that's also totally fine. There's a B That's kind of what we're angling for here. <laughs> No, I said it. Uh, there I was is, saying there yesterday, is. It's it would be underground. It'd be great for Andrews. Yeah, he's young. He's in film school, so it'd be great on his resume later on that he got to hang out with a bunch of degenerates on YouTube and talk <laughs> and, and cancel himself over and over again by association. Could we say that? Or couldn't one argue that we're uh, brooming he's... Andrew because we're so much older than him? Well, we are killing his uh, career hopes in Hollywood. That's for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, I don't know what he's, he's going like to be filming. He's not going to be in that fucking town. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe he's just in it for the lulls. I mean, Hollywood's I mean, I, actively I think, killing you know, itself. Children are, children are in high demand for Hollywood, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Just not necessarily in yes. the way that Andrew would appreciate or enjoy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, you'd have like, to lose yeah. the mustache. Yeah, he's look. He looks like he's after children. Yeah, who would have? Who would have? Who would have strange facial hair? Uh, well, I know yeah. Dan Snyder's looking for some new kids to hire, so I don't know. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe there's that possibility at Nickelodeon. I don't know. Maybe I've yet to watch that Nickelodeon documentary. I, I kind of. Yeah, I, I was gonna. I'm actively too. avoiding it because I don't want to retroactively kill my my childhood. Like what, it, what is it, this? I've missed this entirely. There's, there's a like there's, documentary? there's a yeah. Nickelodeon documentary where they they're basically pulling the like you know the curtains back on everything. <laughs> uh, they're that, they're that, not really pulling back the curtain. I watched it oh. last week. Uh, oh. It's it's not that. It's not. Anything, it, it, act, it defends Dan Schneider, if anything, which is kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Okay, well maybe it's not because I was expecting to watch it and be like, man, I supported like the worst people. Well, ever. Uh, what's it, her name is doing a, a YouTube channel. I forget the name, forgive me, but uh, she goes mm-hmm. live and talks about it when they aired it. What? Who did she, she play? Four part. She, there was a four parter, um, uh, and she was discussing it, and it was Ooh, she was getting which, into a lot of the background stuff. Was wow. it Jeanette McCurdy by chance? Because she yes, her. McCurdy. That's it. Yeah, she McCurdy. was the one who really started the whole thing. She wrote a yeah. book with the greatest title I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. I'm glad it was. I'm glad my mom is dead. I Damn. Like, yeah. Ooh. Apparently, her mother wow. was like really terrible to her. So you don't I, say. I, <laughs> I mean, hanging out with the Menendez, really... Menendez brothers. <laughs> yeah. It's um, it's a good series if you just want like if you're not familiar with the Nickelodeon stuff and want to dive in, but. Um, it doesn't focus on Dan Schneider a lot. It deflects from Dan Schneider a lot. If anything, a lot of the people that come out and like say, oh, he's kind of weird, 
then there's they have just as many people come out and say oh he was actually there for me and he was super nice and all this stuff i don't understand why people are calling him weird and a pedo and all of that um it also uh i think the drake bell stuff is pretty good actually because like for the first time he actually comes out and says like why he's all fucked up the last couple of years which is kind of interesting but there's far better documentaries on youtube like like fan like youtuber made documentaries that actually go into why dan schneider is creepy this so was not it, one of them it's especially weird because there's uh you know there's dan schneider the like extremely creepy possible pedo uh producer for nickelodeon and there's dan schneider the former owner of the of the washington redskins who's also like a sexual predator it's like that name is just really Damn. Th don't have a name that's like that at all schneider well, Dan Snyder and Dan Schneider. Schneider. No. Schneider? And Zack Snyder. It's like, just don't be named it? Schneider or Snyder, was it, apparently. Was anything good on Nickelodeon? Because I don't know any of these names or these people or these things. Uh, I always just thinking, watched the I probably didn't watch anything on Nickelodeon. Yeah. So, well, there was the live action stuff was always just kind SpongeBob of... is Nickelodeon. That's probably yeah. the most famous IP. Nah. So Dan, got Dan Schneider phone. got hey Arnold his his big mm. like start was with all that which was like the the children's version the children the kids answer to Saturday Night Live it was like a sketch comedy show similar to Saturday Night Live but with kids and then everything from there kind of spawned off there was uh, stuff with Amanda Bynes there was obviously Drake and Josh those were all those ones all the live he basically um, monopolized the live action for Nickelodeon. And then the cartoons were mostly classically Klasky Chupo was like one of the one of the big production houses that did that. They did Rugrats and they did a lot of the other ones. And then later on there was SpongeBob and stuff. So it was it had a lot of things on there. There's been a lot of stuff. I saw this meme that said, uh, and correct me if the, I'm wrong because I haven't watched the controversy, but uh, apparently Dan Schneider has a foot fetish. That's uh, what people kind of pick up just because of a lot of the scenes that have been featured in, in many of his shows. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then someone posted, I saw on Twitter, they were like, uh, there's no way Dan Schneider had a foot fetish. There would be signs. And there's the Nickelodeon logo with the big fucking foot. <laughs> have you seen have you seen and, yeah, it, and it's oh, orange sure, like it really unlocked, pretty obvious yeah it just like unlocked something in my brain i'm like i've seen this image a billion times in my fucking life you know when i was growing up watching nickelodeon uh, ah that's so creepy yeah <laughs> I, I, I love I, 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 watch any of this stuff i, I love the start it. of every beast up i really do <laughs> uh, amanda Bynes just needs to come out and talk once she gets a little bit that more poor sleep. girl does yeah. Oh, she's gone through the ringer that one. Holy yeah. Anna. My goodness. That poor yeah, ride. I don't know. Yeah. Worth it if you don't know the stuff. Uh, I think it's like a pretty well put do put together documentary either way, but it, it definitely does not reflect on how bad of a person Dan Schneider is. Was Miley Cyrus on that on that Nickelodeon? She was Disney was Channel. Disney. She was Disney, was Channel, Disney. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh what was it? Because they were both Hillary on. Duff was uh was Nickelodeon, I believe. No, she it, was it's hard, as well. No, it's hard to keep name. track of who was on which because they both got, you know, shafted. So. Yeah, yeah no, see, I was born was in Glee. Was, was Glee on Disney? I think it didn't no, all those children. No, no Glee was, Glee was, uh, wait, it might have been. Was it ABC? No, it was Fox. Was, oh, it was Fox. Oh. I just don't understand what he does children's entertainment, to be honest. Stup Stupenzo. <laughs> I like that. You got to highlight that one. <laughs> That's. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yeah. People and ask people unite against the common enemy, foot people. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on outside my window. I'm sorry. You're good. You're good. Well, anyway, yeah. So now that we sufficiently derailed the uh the stream right from the beginning. Like... Um yeah, we actually had topics we were gonna discuss today that were on the docket. Um I think Platoon's the only one who saw the Ghostbusters movie, but not for a lack of, uh, I don't know, in initially wanting to, I guess, because Dark and I, Dark Hour and I both yeah. had a ticket to go see it and didn't. Because yeah. I tried to get through the first one and I was so fucking bored, I just kind of shut up. I couldn't find a free re replay of the uh, of Afterlife and I never saw it. So I was like, if I can't watch that, I'm not going to go suffer. It's on through. Netflix. Is it on Netflix? It's on I Netflix, yeah. 
I don't have Netflix. Whoa, 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 I'm assuming wait. you guys, uh, you guys are going to rearrange Canada. your date, though, right? Yeah, you have Canadian Netflix, so it might yeah, not be the different. same for me. Ghostbusters Afterlife, I could not find anywhere. Yeah, um, I did rent it for like four dollars, and then didn't finish it within forty-eight hours because I was bored out of my fucking mind. Hold on, even Hold on, on, even at two times speed. <laughs> I wasn't going to watch it on two times speed. <laughs> you can find everything on the high seas. Why did you rent it? because it's fucking convenient and i'm fucking sitting there and it's a, like no. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not a movie worth it's not a movie worth giving your your computer stds over so. yeah like i'm just i'm sitting on the couch and i can click and pay four bucks or like you know go get on the computer uh click through 80 pop-up ads some porn uh you know watch watch the porn. and watch a shitty fucking like 480i version of it like is that how you do it? like i use my phone for all this stuff i've got a nice little app it casts to my tv it's really convenient and it has the most powerful ad blocker i've ever seen in that there are no pop-ups anytime ever i just i've got the bookmarked website use that thing it's brilliant i just cast it it's great sometimes yeah. it, it like pauses itself and that's the only problem i've ever and, had do we just have it bad here in america like, no, I think the... you guys are just you guys have like a, a curse of convenience almost because you guys have more access to more streaming apps than anyone else in the world. So to uh, sail the seas for anything seems like heresy almost with how no, much it, it truly was like they figured it out for me years ago where it they made it so convenient that I did stop being a bad boy. Yeah, like piracy <laughs> was, was legit, down I'm just incredibly, like, uh, uh, probably to its lowest in the internet age about maybe it's just so 10 convenient. years ago and then as the the different services started pulling their stuff from everybody and essentially recreating cable it just it's now on the rise again so i don't pay odds? for anything i have a little uh well, Amazon stop. you're in canada and uh, and i have your tax rates are free, ridiculous so. well i mean that's true <laughs> i mean I can't, I can't even can't even argue <laughs> call him out call him out <laughs> Dude, I can stream a 4K 8 gigabyte version that can fill up my fucking terabyte hard drive. I don't care, dude. I can just fucking stream it for four dollars. Like, I'll just. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I've, I have, uh, I've pirated plenty of movies after the fact, but I'm always a little weary with things that are currently in theaters. So, you know, because that that's where that's where you might get, end up getting getting to the 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 real weird Russian websites. <laughs> <laughs> you're in canada <laughs> not wrong because i'm trying to work out who's about to get drone striked from that buzzing sound in the background it's, it's either it's, cynic or it's I, or it's gooch who's been like uh, rumbled by the canadian i know it's me uh i think uh the lawn people i don't know lawn people i don't fucking the, the, know. The, the lawn landscapers i don't landscapers. know what they're called the landscaping people the, the fucking so, borrowers of the garden the lawn people <laughs> the gnomes <laughs> <laughs> they're tending to the garden <laughs> it's actually funny Earl, earlier today I forget, we got into an art because uh, uh, every three of the of the four of you have been on uh my show so you know i do the the twitter group and i put the date up in the title so it's like this is the the date so you know when it is but we, we there was an argument over um american style date like de uh month day year versus uh day month year and i was like you know what I don't care. My country has better missiles, and that's why it wins. <laughs> we win this conversation. We're doing month, day, year. <laughs> that was that was my argument. Uninspired was like, I'm French, and I am just going to roll over and accept these terms. Now, that is a very French approach to things. Yes, I can <laughs> see that. I'm anyway. I'm waiting until the fucking weed whacker stops. <laughs> I can hear it now, actually. So, Platoon, what, yeah. what was your what was your take on the the newest uh, Ghostbusters? Oh, fuck we, yeah! Well, we brought it up. Even I'm the only one who's seen it. Why not? Um, yeah, I, I had to do a, a triple take because I thought I'd, I need. I know there are lots of characters in this, and like way more than there should be. Exactly how many characters are there in this this new film? Because you know, generally, you need a a relatively small but important core cast in order that you have room to develop characters and also make the plot make sense and do other things. The new Ghostbusters film has 16 main characters. Oh, 16, geez. one six. It is insane. Because the pro they've got the problem of having to carry through the original cast, the ones who are still alive, 
Um, and also the new Busters, who they introduced in the previous film, whilst also for some reason introducing a load of new people that they don't really need in this one to add up to a roster of 16 people. Um, and so, yeah, none of them have anything to do, really, except for the one girl who has a brief, maybe, maybe not lesbian relationship with a ghost. That's fun. What? Um, yeah, that's <laughs> in it. It's actually wow. the nicest oh bit of the film, to be honest. There's two like really nice bits of the film. I'm, I don't really think spoilers matter. I'm going to not spoil everything, but just some things. So that's the least useful spoiler warning ever. Just um, and it gets really cold. Yeah, th th there are the two like nice... I guess, character elements to it. The first one is this anti-Indiana Jones thing or anti-Luke Skywalker thing. Because, you know, modern Hollywood, when it comes with old characters, seems to think that the only thing you can do with old characters is to make them old, miserable, and depressed. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, this film does the complete opposite, and it's quite nice, because you've got Ray Stance from the original, and you've got uh, Winston from the original. Um, and Winston's trying to tell Ray to calm down because he's getting himself in danger and he's too old for this kind of thing and he's going to get himself hurt and all the rest of that. So you're thinking, oh, here we go again. But actually, Ray Stance's response, and to be fair, he's the only one who looks like he's having fun in this entire film, is, well, these are my golden years and this is exactly what I want to be doing with them. And actually, I'm having a load of fun here. So, you know, I'm not going to be a miserable, bored, depressing old man. Thank you very much. That's a nice bit in the film. And then the weird maybe lesbian relationship with the ghost, I might be saying is nice just because it's the only other character thing in the film. Or it might be that it's genuinely not done terribly. It's not like overtly, oh yeah, they're going to slam the clam because, you know, one of them is a ghost and that would be really hard to do. But um, <laughs> it's it's close enough that it's it's almost undeniable, hey, I think, that can, it's there. In canon, I mean, they have the the scene from the first movie. So I guess they made that into a dream, though. They, they like oh, but that. that's the other thing, though, is that the rest of the film that actually does happen is just the first movie. Like, plot oh. for plot beat. It's, it's just the same film with more people and less of the humor. Because all the jokes are deliberately designed not to land. The funny thing about them, I think, in the film's mind, is that everyone who's telling the jokes knows that the jokes aren't funny. So you're meant to laugh at how awkward it is, but it, it really doesn't work. Um, um, so who, so there is that. But the plot beats has, are all the same as the first one. Who has? Sorry, who has the lesbian? Is it the child? Does she have a lesbian relationship with a ghost? Or yeah, her, is her name? Oh. I want to say her name is Phoebe. I think her name is Phoebe. Um, like she's 21, I think, in real life now, because it's been so long since the original film, but it's indeterminate amount, like, how much time has passed between the two films. So I don't know how old she is. Oh, no, I do know, because that's a big plot. No, she's 15 in the film. Whoa. Yeah. Um, what? So Ooh. it's not like a, a lesbian, I want to fuck you kind of thing. It's more of a, like, they have a, a sincere, deep emotional attachment that may or may not lead to lesbianism. Um, but nothing ever comes of it because the film doesn't have time to actually add the interest part to love interest. So... They just sort of, like, she's their only friend. Her plot beat essentially is she's she's too young to be going out on missions with the Ghostbusters. So the evil mayor, who is the evil uh, regulatory guy, Walter Peck, I think his name is from the first one, um, tells them that she's not allowed to go on missions anymore. So they leave her behind and she gets upset and her only friend is a ghost and they may or may not want to figure each other. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and then, then you've got, what's his name um, from Stranger Things? Uh, Finn Wolfhard's character and his entire character arc is I'm 18 now um, so I, I can drive a car that's it that, that's his only thing in the film the weird um, little trash goblin what's it called the, the little Slimer like, Slimer that's the one the greasy goober thing it has it's in there for a cameo appearance but it has more to do with the story than one of the main characters does because there are too many main characters like it pops up at the beginning and slimes him and he's like oh good then you don't see it again until right at the end of the film where it pops up again to eat another evil ghost and then it's gone. But it, at least it accomplishes something. Um, and then the evil villain is just like a bad version of the Night King from um, Game of Thrones. It's just this evil ice person. So I call him the Shite King. In the Shite script that King. I'm probably never ever going to actually get done. Let's put that on the second channel. Yeah, I probably, yeah, if I do anything with it. But it's just kind mm. of, like, it's not a hateable film. It's just really, really oppressively pointless and boring. There's no, there's no point to it existing. It's just... It's like what I imagine a discarded version of the old cartoon might have been. Um, just put on the big screen with a big budget. And yeah, they, they introduce all these things. Like there's this Indian guy who's basically like a firebender from Avatar. And like, he's the like descendant of some ancient Sumerian Ghostbusters who captured the Shite King with fire. And he learns to control fire. And the ghost girl who wants to maybe finger the 15 year old, her parents died in a fire. And she carries a match thing around. And so they, there are basic setup a payoff things that just do, they exist in the film. It's just that you sit there thinking, okay, but why? I don't care. N none of this makes me 
want to see any more Ghostbusters. Really just leave it alone now. It doesn't need to exist. Looks like audiences feel the same way. The 2016 one got a B plus cinema score. And you know how everyone kind of feels about that one. So like I've driven the point home about what cinema score is before, but like to reiterate, so B plus is like a death knell for a movie because it's the score on opening night from the hardcore fans, the fans that are probably going to give it more leeway. Um, so that was the 2016 one. And then this one got the same score. And the 2021 one got a, a minus, which is pretty good. Um, it somehow opened slightly higher than the one in 2021, but it probably will end around the same too. Yeah. That one was hindered by the uh, pandemic because it was It was a COVID film, but, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. That yeah. was one of the things I, I didn't realize because I, I was streaming with Gary from Nerd Rodic yesterday. I think it was yesterday. What day is it today? Is it Monday? Monday. It is Monday. I was streaming with him yesterday. I've already lost track of time. He pointed out, which I didn't realize, the Ghostbusters 2016 actually made more money overall than Ghostbusters Afterlife did, which I was slightly surprised yeah. by. But then again, it was a COVID film, as you say. So if yeah. this film like underperforms or performs the same as Afterlife, I think you'd have to count that as a loss because you know it, it's making the same amount of money as a film that was severely disrupted by a like a once in a century global pandemic, which is not a good mark of quality for your film. You should really be beating that, I think. Mm. Well. Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> that's. It seems like that's pretty much uh, what everyone's feeling about it, too. Bustin makes me feel nothing. Damn. Oh, that's so Dude, sad. no dopamine for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else to contribute to Ghostbusters as a topic. I didn't even go see the damn thing. But, but it's the I, only thing on our list, I think, that I've actually right, seen. Yeah. So I can just shut up now and let you guys talk about whatever the fuck else is coming <laughs> up. Yeah, we got know. 22 minutes a platoon and that's that um and, and, and the first everyone... 10 was us talking about nickelodeon and yeah. kid diddling and shit it was like <laughs> jesus <laughs> christ he's been talking about ghost ba finger banging for the last 15 minutes as well <laughs> yeah true that mm. that's too bad um we all watched roadhouse besides platoon though roadhouse <laughs> Roadhouse. Ooh, yep. Roadhouse. That's a good segue. Yeah, everyone literally just said oof. So I guess I said can... Roadhouse. I did not say oof. Oh, I, I guess. Said Roadhouse. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's uh, see how everyone felt about it. How'd you feel about it, Gooch? I felt like this is the most beta film I've ever seen. It's like Damn. they're betraying, trying to be this tough movie, but it's so lame. It's like. Like even the the parts with the band playing, like they're <laughs> trying to play music and through these bar fights that are ridiculous, and um, they're trying to act tough by playing through the like it's everything about it was beta. Like it was just the, 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 Connor McGregor uh, for an MMA fighter. He's not an actor. Was not bad. I I liked him in that role for that film. That's about it. Like I do, I see him doing anything else. I don't know. But this is kind of like a he was ABC. just playing himself, though. He wasn't really acting. That was just who he is. That was well. Like, they're, I mean, they're yeah, like, just really, show up, get drunk, like, and be you. Well, <laughs> like, as for Jake Gyllenhaal, like, uh, he he looked like a retard, like that knew how to fight. Like, he <laughs> say he, that he, last like, again. Say that last Gyllen again. Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. Whatever. He's retarded. He was like, <laughs> he looked like he, he looked like special needs that knew how to MMA fight. Like he, he it was like he, he smiled like he was simple Jack. Like yeah, I, I'm here to fight. You know, like it, it was just so it was like so over the top ridiculous. Like I just I was just like he's he literally in the beginning of the move gets stabbed and he just looks at the guy like like nothing happened. I'm like, okay, that's real. Well, that's that's a good take. Like, and then he gets stabbed again, and then he just like enrages like he also he's like hulk hogan he gets up and he's just, i thought he was gonna start you know doing the ear thing to the crowd that wasn't there and yeah. I, it was just like it was so when that happened it was a little bit <laughs> yeah well even the part where he's slamming his head against the key the piano keys and he goes this piano is out of tune as he's getting his head slammed i'm like okay this is um really well stupid. i i can tell you i i know uh, a, a good number of uh mixed martial artists and uh, a lot of them would probably have a very similar reaction there's a lot of punchiness involved with that profession so well the like a lot of it was cgi I, yeah. I, I bounced i you guys know like well darko you know like i i've been in 
fighting my whole life. Like my whole life mm-hmm. has been boxing, kickboxing. I was a ref for MMA. I was supposed to be in the UFC, but I got in a severe car crash, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, that was just like way over the top. That was just like, if I was an actual pro fighter, I'd be like, what the fuck? Like, that yeah, makes it this definitely, stupid. I can agree with you. There was some moments, especially in the final fight where you could tell that they actually paid attention to what they were supposed to be doing in the situations, but they're, they're overshadowed by ridiculousness at certain points. I actually immediately started writing a script. I'm about halfway done with it already on uh, to break down that final fight because it has both some of the best, uh, most accurate stuff I've ever seen. And then some of the worst, least accurate stuff. I don't know who was doing the choreography. He couldn't make up his mind. It's very manic, a very manic fight. And well, the kicking, the kicking was accurate. Yes, it was very uh, much. The, the, a, it was very much Thai uh, style kicks. Yeah, the push um, kicks or snap kicks, like like that. Those is were a all movie accurate. like this supposed to be accurate? Here's the thing: like, you can either defense, do one or the other. Coming, you can't do both. You can't. I think have you it can. Both ways. I don't. I have can. seen so many behind the scenes documentaries and films that we love, like that we've all agreed at some point. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, movie's fucking great. And there is an admittance and an acceptance about the fact that like it's a movie and that they're like they're not going for a hundred percent accuracy because if you are Mm -hmm. you probably should be watching a documentary yes but if you're going to go out of your way to make certain aspects of it look very realistic there's almost did they talk that it was going to be realistic before the movie came out or anything like this Uh, could be the most realistic fucking fighting you've ever seen in your life (laughs) uh i don't remember hearing any of the press i just know that they were very heavily involved with the ufc specifically because they are they're they're allowed to use the name they filmed uh part of it at ufc 285 which was one of the biggest events that ufc had put on at that point that was when john jones won the heavyweight title which was this thing that they had built up to for years so you know the ufc was very heavily uh invested in this film so i would assume that they would want at least a degree of realism and then they there like i said there was certain like like there may have it was very brief but there may have been the best example I've ever seen of somebody applying a rear naked choke in the history of movies in this. And then it's followed up by really ridiculous stabbing and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, yeah. I actually you know, thought, like, see me as someone who's not watching it and scrutinizing it in that way, I thought that was the coolest part of the entire fucking movie. And that's what they were probably going for. Well, that, and, like, and that's, the, uh, that's it. Like it, it looks cool. Right. And like, it I, looks I'm not even really worried. cool. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not even worried about the fight scenes. It's like, it's Jake Gyllenhaal or whatever you see. Jill and Hall. <laughs> Jill whatever. And Hall. <laughs> but he looked, he literally looked retarded. Like he smiled, like he sat there and smiled. and like, uh, 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 uh. like, it was just like, it was just like, put me, I, I, I was like, get me in there. I'll punch him for Christ's sake. Like, like he just look. <laughs> it looks so stupid. Like, like at least take the pain like you know like go with it but it was just i don't know he always looked a little bit like though Uh, for some reason the day is it the day after tomorrow that came on my tv for about five minutes before i switched off and discussed the other day and i remembered him in that thinking yeah you you don't look like you're completely conscious of any scene that you're in because he's he's basically a zombie through the whole movie like uh, i mean he basically is yeah yeah i I think that's why like he doesn't have any inflection yeah that I think he was best. That was like, in my opinion, his best role. He was perfectly suited for that creepy ass weird shit. And yeah, I think he, that's kind of how he can be intimidating as in like, um, sorry, when which he's role? trying to be a uh, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler, not, not the oh, comic yeah. character. Was a, that's, yeah, that's yeah, that a was a good movie. movie. Yeah. That's a good movie. Yeah. I really like him. And I, I thought he pulled this off. I, he was not the problem t- in the movie to me. I just felt <laughs> like it was, um, well, I don't want to steal Vex's thunder. She said it pretty pretty well. Uh, what did you call it? Oh. oh, I don't know what I called it. Uh, yeah, no, uh, not a good movie. But I don't think, yeah, Gyllenhaal isn't the problem. I think he, I like him as an actor. I don't think he's a bad actor. And he's really leaned into his own, like the last 10 years, I would say, with the weirder and darker roles. Um, he was good in Southpaw. So that's also why I don't think he mm-hmm. was really bad for this role. But uh, it's just more that he's not given anything to work with, so you don't really see that shine through. And instead, you see him as a retard, as, as Gooch has so beautifully put put it. So, <laughs> um, I think, I think that's we that's are now, the... by the way, beyond the point at which I can be asked to go through this video and bleep these on the rewatch. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that now. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. I've taken timestamps if that helps. <laughs> oh, good. Um, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> you're good. You're good. Uh, it's uh, yeah. He's not the worst thing about it. I think it's just like it, this is content for the sake of content. That's it what also, you said. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the original Roadhouse was by no means a gem, but it was fun. Like it had something spunky and uni unique about it, right? And all of that is taken out to just kind of make a, like a worse than generic action flick, uh, which doesn't even have enough. Like I kept waiting for the action, and when it did happen, it just it never looked right, and I was wondering why that was. And it turns out that all of the fights in the film use a CG body double. Because they're mm -hmm. using this new method of filming them so that they don't have to do the fake punches. Because I don't know if you guys noticed, but there were so many inconsistencies yep. between like the looks on their faces from one one switch to the next uh, in the same scene. Or like inconsistencies with blood and scarring. And I was, I was like, that's a really basic thing. You to, like, see it up. from the get-go from with Post Malone yeah. when he punches the fat guy. But you can blame uh, Blue Eye Samurai for that because they brought that in with the animation, the fight scenes. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta check that out still. But yeah, it just, it wasn't good. Like it, I, I wasn't trying to nitpick it. I was just curious because I was like, oh, Jake Gyllenhaal's got no shirt on. Okay, I'll watch this. And then I was like, <laughs> what the, what the fuck is this? What it? It, yeah, and, and I, I think they were scrutinizing the fights so much too because it is not a, there is no story. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, very uh, flat characters the whole way through. Yeah, and the eighties, um, you know, that was a time period that's for sure. It had some schlock, and there was a lot of charm to it, especially you know, nostalgia uh, can get mm -hmm. you anytime. And Roadhouse, the original, is kind of like that. There's a lot of nostalgia charm to it, but yeah. with this one, it tried to like reclaim that, and it absolutely did not do it it felt it was trying too hard um like everything felt very um beta <laughs> yeah i guess so well second rate like uh you know the original a lot of it's contrived and that's part of the charm but the stuff like you were saying with the band it felt it just didn't feel right it's like oh i see what you're trying to do and i mm -hmm. hate that it takes you out of the mm -hmm. movie and I respect what they were trying to do with the fight scenes. But again, like it was so wildly over the top that um, like the scene where Jake Gyllenhaal is, it's the flashback and they're actually in the octagon and he kills his friend. Mm -hmm. This isn't a spoiler, mm -hmm. by the way. I don't think, I think it's in the. No, track. they imply it pretty quickly. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, but like one of the punches when he was going down, it, he was so obviously pulled by Jake Gyllenhaal as it was going down because the ref was supposed to come up and grab it. And it was just stuff that I picked up on immediately. And that's like, that's a director problem. That's the take they decided to go with. Like that was his decision. It was also um, a production planning problem. They only had one day to do that. They oh, really? Go, yeah. yeah. And it had to be between fights because that's filmed. That, those scenes were filmed. Oops at an actual ufc event yes yeah i so remember they, when pictures but you can still edit that. that stuff you can edit it yeah you can yeah. do that but like they they didn't have a chance to do a lot of takes on these things so there was always they probably should just cut it a little sooner or something yeah I'm that's what really i was thinking i even remember change the angle i'm not yeah i remember thinking like that wasn't even necessary to be on there like just scrap it and just take yeah. it out well, the UFC um, would frown upon that because then that's implying that the referees and the organization doesn't do its job properly and that someone can actually die in the ring. I, well, so, I did see, I, I don't know shit about UFC necessarily, but um, I did see some criticism about like, this is the worst stoppage of, you know, if this was yeah. real, this would be the worst UFC stoppage yeah. of all time. Because yeah. it, it was like very so slow. late. Yeah. It was, a, it was it, so uh, what we call a, a Herb Dean stoppage. It's when uh, the guy is basically on his deathbed and Herb Dean, who's like notoriously the worst referee, goes like, uh, "No, no, no, no! I got a time out there. He's my buddy. I did, I did refing clinics with him. So watch what you say. So, I don't no, care kidding. what you did. I'm He's kidding. notoriously <laughs> terrible. Like, him and Steve Mazzagatti, two of the worst referees. Mazzagatti, Mazzagatti would like stop the fight if the people breathed on each other too hard. They're like, yeah, hey, it's done. It's done. It's." Uh, um, yeah, the, if I can just add on, I did like the change to I, it's supposed to be Florida, but it's filmed in the Dominican Republic, I think. Um, I didn't mind that change. I think that was kind of an interesting one. And it, it also kind of allows for the a bit more of the the race swapping because there is a predominantly more mixed like population down there. I didn't mind that. Uh, I think Conor McGregor was probably the best part of it. Yeah, he's not acting at all, but he just like he comes off as just like a roided out leprechaun, which I thought was pretty funny. 
So, yes. <laughs> yeah, it was comical. I, I could run with that, it. He's yeah. Walking yeah. around with that fucking smile on his face the entire movie. It's yeah. Mario, yeah. Weird. You know, you chat, know what he Mario reminded me of? He's bad too. He reminded me of Colin Farrell uh, doing Bullseye and Daredevil with Ben. Oh Affleck. my goodness! That's, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So that's what he kind of reminded me of. It's like he was watching that movie in between takes. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I was wondering. So he has the 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 tattoo on his like abdomen that says McGregor, and then they replaced mm-hmm. it with not. I want to know if they put like some sort of fake skin over that and redid it, or if they just CG'd that too. I I couldn't tell, but mm. probably easier just to do makeup. I would think. Or cheaper. Even. That might have been, he may have had uh, for as bad as the movie is, he may have had the greatest introduction film history, though, to be like in this one. Yeah, to be yeah. kicked out of like some dude's hat, like some p- person's house because he's like sleeping with his wife and then just walk butt ass naked through a, a Italian market and beat the shit out of a guy for his clothes like Terminator style. I thought that was <laughs> that was hilarious. It might, it might be yeah. the greatest. It was a horrible movie, but my, that was that was a great introduction for him. Yeah, if you uh, weren't aware, this movie's wildly over the top. That is the introduction to the primary, well, the muscle villain. He is the primary villain, I guess. Mm -hmm. He's the one that he actually fights. Uh, Yeah, I guess. Yeah, he's like the dragon. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Well, he's the last he's the last villain standing. So, yeah. uh, Does anyone in the chat care? I don't think anyone cares. Does anyone care? Uh, Like, let me know now. Because I did just want to talk about how this is how fucking stupid the ending of this movie is. So Conor McGregor gets it's a rear naked choke, you said, right? That he gets out of. Yeah. Which yeah. actually the way he does get out of it is also pretty, pretty accurate. It's pretty, it's pretty accurate pretty... the way he walks over the leg and stuff. I, I could go. Yeah, that was fucking that. cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, that <laughs> looks really good. But anyway, so um, he stabs Jake Gyllenhaal. He's got him on the ground and he gets up to get another uh what fucking spiky looking stick and he's yeah about it's to... basically it's like pieces of like a table they went through so it was a shard, yeah yeah so like he's gonna shard, yeah. he's yeah. gonna kill jake gyllenhaal and the the boss bad guy stands up and goes yeah fucking kill him and then he starts shouting do your fucking job i'm like guy he's literally about to kill him and it's just this hyper contrived, like super fucking irritating, takes you out of the movie scene. And it's right at the end, too, right after the coolest part of the movie, too. Yeah. Or the only cool part, I would say. Um, one of the fights that actually worked was for me anyway, was the final one. But yeah, most of the fights looked like car- garbage. That one was pretty solid. Like I said, there was legitimate techniques in there. Like one of the takedowns he does is what's called a Katagaruma, aka a fireman's carry. <laughs> And he does it to damn near perfection. Like you could tell he practiced it. Mm. And uh, so, but then they immediately do some weird back, like, like back handspring RKO weird shit. And I'm like, what the hell was that? Like, and they're like within 10 seconds of each other. Like, you can't do that. You can't put something hyper realistic and then put something that's essentially out of people already said avatar out of cool. avatar but it looks cool that's the it thing. didn't look cool right. it looked lame as shit <laughs> <laughs> it looked lame as shit i thought that last ending fight was kind of i thought it was bad in all honesty i can yep. i can appreciate yeah. kind of where it was trying to go but like like the piano scene that gooch mentioned there's even a point where they like body slam each other into the stone it, floor and then they just get up like nothing's wrong um i don't know if you guys noticed as well when he takes that wooden thing and stabs Conor McGregor. When Conor McGregor falls on the floor, the wood spikes sticking out of him are CGI. I don't know if you guys oh, noticed yeah. that. I, I, didn't, didn't, I didn't notice I didn't that, pay, actually. I didn't yeah. pay close enough attention, but I'm not shocked by it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was just, I was really disappointed by that final fight scene, because again, it it was going the right direction, but it's because of the way they chose to choreograph and film it. It's just, it's a mess. It looks more like a mess than anything else. Well, even the part where he's looking for the spoiled brat child, and he's going around the boat, and then he shoots the 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 uh, spear gun at him, and he just like mm. moves to the side like it was nothing. And I'm just like, yeah, really? Okay, that's yeah, spear guns go pretty damn fast. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> but there, so. uh, the, it, there wasn't really any me- except for Conor McGregor. Everybody, like I said, was very one note. Uh, mm-hmm. no one's really, I can't even remember most of their names, which is not good. I just uh, remember Dalton, Dalton, yes. and character. Knox. 
Yeah. Which is which is going to be really interesting. There's actually a, a a tight end in the NFL named Dalton Knox, so that's going to be interesting when when they realize that. But the uh, yeah, like I I can't remember the the name of the bar owner who's a very important character. I don't remember McGregor's character's name. Freddie Knox. Was it literally said it's that was Knox. Knox. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. it said it on his stomach. It's the only reason I remember it. Wasn't uh, the bar owner named Freddie? Her name was Freddie. Sure. Yeah, I'll I'll take I'll take that as as a yes, but like as the correct answer. Yeah, uh, definitely. I, I knew that, and the one girl, like the love interest, was Ellie, and I only remember that because when they were on the boat in the one scene, he screamed it like seventeen times. That's the only reason I remember it. The rest of them, I can't remember a single uh, person's name, which is never a good sign. And where the humor was dropped in was really unnecessary too. Like I expect in humor in a movie like this, it's purposely over the top. Um, mm -hmm. Well. It but where it was dropped in just sucked. Like in the final fight, when uh, his head's banging off the piano, he's like, "This piano's on a tune. Sounds pretty good to me." <laughs> okay, <laughs> get get fucked. I really wanted <laughs> Lucky Charms after watching the movie. In all honesty, it's just, it's like, <laughs> it's, the, his uh, character's great. <laughs> even the uh, boat scene where he's going to find Ellie on the boat, which mm -hmm. he knows, like possibly oh. she's not on there and the the dad is just like oh just you got double crossed my friend <laughs> you are an idiot <laughs> like that is the, the dad's part. name I, mean, I do remember his name the dad's name is big dick yeah big yeah dick. the dad's name was big dick <laughs> <laughs> yeah my big favorite thing about that I, big... my favorite thing about the boat rescue is that they're going underwater you can see out the window that there's water and she mm -hmm. has this I think it was a fire extinguisher. She's trying to break the window to get out. And I'm like, go up the stairs. That's a terrible <laughs> it's a idea. Woman, what you're dude. Doing. It's a woman. You got to excuse it sometimes, you know? It's... I think there was like one scene that I actually laughed at. I can't even recall what it was. I want to say it had something to do with the crocodile. That was, I think that oh, was. Oh, God. That's, it's so oh, funny how yeah. like nonchalantly he just murders people. Yeah. yeah. Well, th that one he didn't murder. That was the crocodile. That was. Well, yeah, he threw him in the water. He knew what was happening. What happened to Dell? Nobody believed that the that the crocodile was real, though. That was the whole. That was <laughs> that was the gag. It wasn't really. It didn't hit well, but the gag was that no one believed that it was real yeah. because the Which only person a, who ever. A, saw... Yeah, that was like a stupid running joke, considering it's fucking Florida. I don't. Yeah. That... I, I didn't understand that joke at all. It would have made sense if it were like, oh, it's New York. Oh, there might be a crocodile out there. But it's like, there's it's, some it's sore Florida. crocodiles. Oh, the <laughs> yeah. part I love the most is when he walked up to the one guy that became a bouncer. Is like, uh, what's with the knuckles? And his knuckles are all bloodied and, and scarred. I'm like, oh, my <laughs> oh, yeah, God. Yeah. Tom, please. So I, boxed the I boxed yeah. the little in college. Yeah. Oh, really? I, I, so they're still I, like this, are they? I, I, I boxed my. my a long time and my knuckles yeah. totally didn't look I've, even close to yeah, that. I've thrown plenty of yeah. punches in my life and my knuckles just flattened a little yeah. bit. That's all that happened. It didn't really. The dude, his name is Kyle. He drinks Monster and he punches drywall. So that's why <laughs> they look yeah. that way. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> Actually. Wadib. Hello. Listen, how Wadib. You... <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> What's up, Andrew? <laughs> Doing good. I'm doing good. Doing good. good. I'm doing good. good. I'm Same doing joke good too. again. <laughs> I've had that show so many times, but I'm still gonna do it. He's gonna do it until the next film comes out, and then it'll yep, be Yep, in again. four years. <laughs> That's what I'll stop. Every Thursday he did it. <laughs> hey, I went I, I also good. went I also went to community college. I just went to a different school after the fact. We'll make fun of Andrew yeah, yeah. Community College. Did you watch Roadhouse at all, Andrew? No. Oh, he's he he, he went and watched Dune, Dune again. again. Yeah, I did go see Dune. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking knew it. The most expensive perfume com uh, commercial ever made. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> so actually, it's funny because that was one of the things that I thought of while I was watching the new Roadhouse. I was like, this is the most uh, useless yet expensive advertisement for people to go watch the original movie I've ever seen. That's <laughs> all I felt. It just made me want to go watch the first one and that's it yeah and that's never good when these remakes do that yeah and they just make you want to like oh there's a better version of this movie oh yeah yeah well and these remakes uh feel like they're getting well this one was like 35 years but what's the um what's that disney movie they're turning into a live action movie already that was like a cartoon like five years Moana. ago Moana? Moana or whatever. yeah Moana. yeah yeah, yeah. 
I have rock? a question from, from Black Lives or Black Knives. What's an eight HBCU? What's that? Some sort of university or something. I'm not sure what that means, though. Um, the Dark Tower go to an HBCU. I don't know what that stands for. Please clarify, Black Lives or Black Knives. And I could uh, Google it, given I've not seen the film and have nothing else to do. I'll be useful. Fuck it. <laughs> well, I'll even uh, college and university. I did actually. I did actually go to a historically mm. black college. Yes, I did. I did actually. Mm. Were you black at the time, historically, or were uh, you? It, I am. I am two percent Nigerian, according to my uh, oh. genealogy test. So when I showed up, I was in full dashiki. Chat, does he get the pass or not? Yes or no? No, but I, I technically did go to a historically uh, black university because it was in Newark, New Jersey. So, Dang. Which everything there is historically black. I live in, in the English countryside, so we have it sort of the other way around. If there's a black kid in a school, it's historic. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I mean, I'll, tell, I'll tell people exactly. I don't care. I mean, I don't go there anymore, but yeah, I went to Rutgers, Obviously. Newark, which was originally the uh, uh, Newark University, which was absorbed by the state. Uh, system for New Jersey into the into Rutgers. So now they they basically bought out smaller colleges and turned them into the universities. That's what I that's where I went. One of the oldest schools in the uh, entire United States, by the way. Well, damn. Um, I'll, I'll do. Uh, I'm gonna pull a few of these up while they're French. Uh, TGB Monster for dollar ninety nine. Hi, Platoon, Cynic, Dark Hour, Andrew, and Vex, and Hi. Gooch. You are you are. Last second yeah, edition. Yeah, you you weren't in the. You technically weren't in the. Uh, what is you weren't it? in the description. description so. Yeah. All right. Oh, I was going to have my first hater. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they'll come soon. Oh, I know. I know. As long uh, as Andrew's on the panel, you don't have any haters. It's just yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> After Saturday, I'm expecting it. Uh, Pitlin for uh, forty four for five dollars. Don't forget about Alanis Morissette getting shafted on. You can't do that on television back in the day. What mm -hmm. was this? Yeah, I'm no not sure idea. about this. I uh, you can do we've it. all forgotten. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, does anyone here know what that is? In reference? Yeah, I do. I mean, it's, I remember uh, you can't do that on television. I don't remember anything happening with Alanis Morissette, though. I was pretty young. Well, though. she was on it, and then I think there was a issue with her and the production company. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I could be pulling shit out of my ass for all I know. Like, but I mean, I'll, I'll look it um, up. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the super chat, though, Pitland. Uh, let's see. And Waylon, Waylon Basephus for $1.99. Save the computer. Just watch corn. What was this in reference to? That's oh, uh, uh, replace the C thing. with a P. No, 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 no. But what, what are we? Uh, <laughs> is this just oh. like friendly advice? No, I, well, I mean, it works as general advice, but I think it's when we were all disavowing our use of pirated media. Oh, mm -hmm. oh I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, this is for you, Platoon. Uh, yeah, Jose Gonzalez will go with member for 13 months, which is the unlucky number of months. Oh, good golly, more than a year. Best show indeed. <laughs> Congratulations for surviving a year. Hey, it's already been a year? Apparently. Been doing this for a year? Doesn't time fly? I don't know. It's either that or he's been a member for a year, which may think... be more than... Mikey, no, yeah, when yeah, did yeah. we start? I think in February. Oh. Or early March. Look. Maybe it has been a year. Our first show was Happy about one year. Shazam. <laughs> it was about Shazam. Was it really about Shazam? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, when did that come out? Shazam, Fury March. of the Gods. March 2023. I remember the awkwardness of your guys' first episode because you were like, we don't know what we're doing, everybody. Well, also What's then Platoon's about? fucking That's grandmother had like a heart attack. Oh, yeah, she oh. did. Oh, yeah, she, had, she had a there stroke. Was a scare. <laughs> no, was it a stroke? No, she fell. One of the it's one of the, the litany of things that break old people happen to her. I can't remember which one it was, but she's had all of them at this point. A stroke, a heart attack, one of those things. Yeah, Fury of the Gods was 17th of March. So I, rem we I actually been, remember like, where after. I was when you guys had your first episode. I was I was driving to teach a jujitsu private lesson and it just notified me that you guys went live. And I was like, I didn't even realize that they were doing yeah, a show. It's <laughs> it is comparable to 9-11, yeah. dude. I'm yeah, glad that you remember it. Yeah, very. <laughs> glad you remember where we were. <laughs> I, uh, a TGP monster for five dollars in the Ghostbusters cartoon. The team fought uh, and Cthulhu. loved the monsters Cthulhu. and won, which was super cool. <laughs> we actually, if uh, we, I had uh, gotcha. the the per, one of the producers, writers, directors from that cartoon on my uh, channel. That was nice. Ke uh, Kevin Altieri. He was also That's known cool. for most most notably known for. 
his work with Batman the Animated Series, but before that, he did the Ghostbusters cartoons and stuff like that. Nice. I might actually have got a reference in the film because I think, um, oh, what's it? Patton Oswalt's character, I think, is supposed to be a, an expert on, or like he's a big fan of Lovecraft and Cthulhu. I think that might have been a reference in that case. Uh, thank you for the super chat, by the way, TGB Monster. Uh, and the next one was Michael Brocky for an ass $5. Uh, that, this is for you, Platoon. Yes, Platoon. You and Maula should do a collab video. Your voices are the best on YouTube, and you're nearly at the same length of videos. Would be awesome. Um, yeah, no, they're, they're always now. It's only if up on Saturday. I think it's probably the closest to collaboration we kind of get. But, uh, but otherwise, yeah. I think we, we both sort of roughly hit the same problem at the same time of doing too many streams and having no time to do projects. So an extra collaboration might not be uh, on the cards anytime soon. But uh, thank you for the compliment. It, it was funny for a while. People were essentially saying you were the new Mauler because Mauler hadn't put out a video in a while and yours were slowly <laughs> catching up to his like in length. And then he I forget which one it was, but it was like his longest video yet. And I was like, well, Mauler did not accept those terms. And he just wanted to uh, like it's kind just of wanted out that was his longest is, I think, six hours. I want to say it's six hours, five or something like that. Yeah. And mine is five and a half. So it is it was coming close to that. But I. Yeah, I don't know how long this Doom one's going to be. It might even be two parts. But given that just before mm. we came on here, and actually right Indeed. before we came on, because I forgot, I didn't know we were starting when we were starting. Happily just going along thinking to myself, you know what? I think an hour's introduction to this video isn't quite long enough. So um, yeah, just, just finishing off with a nice, probably additional hour on the hero's journey, which is going to go to the introduction of the Dune video. I have no idea how long this fucking thing's going to be. But um, maybe I'll catch more than one day. Yeah, that was it. it. Was Doctor Strange too? That was the one. Uh, somebody said it in the chat. Dang. Mm, yeah, that was happened? that was the one that got released, and it was around the time that people were saying like, "Oh, Mauler's been dethroned," and he was like, "Fuck no, I haven't." <laughs> um. Oh, and is there anything else on whatever the fucking topic we were talking about before? The fight, the fight I have a feeling it's going to be a very short stream because we, be. we are burning through these topics like nothing. Yeah, well, we covered a lot of stuff on Thursday on the Blue Room, which is unfortunate that we don't have it here. But we can. I know that you have the beard, dude. So if you want to talk about X-Men, I mean, um, yeah, I, mean, I was not as disappointed with it as I expected to be uh, for the or at least not for the, yeah. the same reasons I expected <laughs> to be, I should say uh, the, the X-Men 97 for anybody who didn't catch the reference. But the. Like I, I like all the the stuff was pointing at. Oh, it's going to be super woke. I mean, it was pretty much in line with what at least the first two episodes was pretty much in line with what has been up to this point with that cartoon. What the thing I was incredibly, incredibly upset about was the dialogue is written so terribly. It is, and I know that it's a cartoon, and the original one was not particularly well written, but it was. They're trying to capture the old audience, right? The now adult audience that watched it back then. You think that they would have tried to at least evolve the writing a little bit, but there is so many clunky expository spitting on myself, clunky expository, you know, lines throughout the. Uh, you know, oh, we need to go visit the man who killed Professor Xavier back last year. You know, we need to see him. You're not going to like this, what we're going to do. And it's just, I'm like, oh, my God. How about just that line at the end? You're not going to like my idea. And then cut to what you're doing. We don't need the explanation of every single detail you're going to do. And that was my biggest problem with the show. Is that they're essentially writing it as if they know, they they want their to treat their audience like idiots. And... They had an opportunity to be like, hey, guess what? You guys like this when you were younger and we've we accept that you're older now and they didn't do it. Hmm. So. You're watching, right, Andrew? Yeah, I like it. I... Uh, my biggest thing wasn't the writing. It was mm -hmm. the voice acting. I was um, just going to. Yeah, that was pretty bad. I, think, too, at certain I points. think I know they wanted to bring back the original cast. <laughs> I think that might have been a bad idea. Um, for some of the actors, yeah, like Rogue, for instance, um, sounds way older. Rogue sounds like sixty years old. Um, yeah, uh, but I think the like the best dialogue is like Magneto's speech or monologue. That was kind of that was fun. And, yeah, that was really good. Um, like that whole thing, and then that paired with uh, uh, what's her name? Foster. No, wait, 
why am I forgetting her name? Ginger Jean chick. Gray. Yeah, Jean Gray. I don't know why I forgot that. Jean Gray. Uh, her giving, Ginger. I don't chick, know. Jean Gray. Pretty. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Redheaded uh, stepchild over there. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whoever her name is. Uh, uh, that like paralleled with her giving birth was nice. I, I think that. I think the show's neat. I appreciate it. I, um, I'm just. I'm a little upset about the visuals too because true. really the yeah I I. I know that it's it it's more efficient to do it this computer style and what they're doing, but it just kind of gives it a generic look across the board with a lot of other animation that's coming out right now. Whereas I I know that they'll never do it, but I would have loved to see them bring back the hand drawn animation from the '90s and keep that. It's not as neat like the like it's you know sometimes it will get a little clunky. Some of the drawing might not match up exactly it's the like same. It's hand drawn. But yeah, it's because it's hand drawn. But yeah, it just it loses all. Yeah, I was gonna say it, it loses takes all of its charm time. with the way they're doing it. It just looks very <sighs> manufactured, very <laughs> you know cookie cutter of them. I think it's the frame rates. I think I think that's what throws you off. And I think I agree with Andrew that the voice acting. It's not the writing. I think it's the voice that voice acting. It comes out like monotone it doesn't they don't have any emotion with their in their in their when they're doing their their lines because it just seems like they're just trying to do a line and then on the the pacing's off too a little bit it kind of rushes and then slows down and then rushes and they're trying to cram a lot into two episodes there um which they did I with like the original it. one too they used to do that a lot yeah the original cram but there's there's but in. this the first two episodes had a lot there that they could have slowed out uh, slowed down a little bit and kind of developed a little bit more um, I liked the first two episodes. I was really was surprised. I don't like McNeil. He looks like he's wearing mascara and he's got lipstick on. I don't know what they're doing with that, but <laughs> he's his... a thespian, all right? <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. Let the hair flow. Let the uh, but I, 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 I'm with Andrew. Like that that scene where he's in trial and he brings up the the jur or the the um, judges and the and the lawyers and everyone judging him and everything. Um, that was a, an incredible. Uh, scene that was that was fire i i really appreciated that wolverine looks a little off too like i don't i don't know yeah, what they're doing with wolverine. Him. his claws look like straw like like straws too thin. coming out too of his... thin they're too skinny they didn't do that yeah like, they didn't give him like the the depth well if it, and it's computer animated like it's just a dull gray like at least put some sheen to the to make yeah. them look like their their claws so there's there you could really pick it apart if you want to i plan on doing a review on it but, I think it's salvageable. Mm -hmm. A lot of the problems that I've seen so far are salvageable, and I'm hoping that it's just the the expository dialogue will slowly taper off as the story becomes its own thing, and we don't have to keep being reminded about the old show. It it, it is in a weird situation where it is a sequel to something that is pretty damn old at this point, yeah. and they're trying to not only appeal to us who grew up with the the original but also still attempt to bring in some newer fans as well. So there like is, you. yes, like Andrew, for instance. And so it is in a weird spot. I'm hoping by at least episode three or four, they've slowed down on the expositoriness. It's, I could deal well, with the art. Yeah. I can deal with the artwork being not what I was good. Used to. Like the so art. did I. You, you, I mean, you. Oh, if you did too, I'm surprised, Gooch. But I was going to say, Andrew, you grew up with mostly that style of that. that well, it it does. It feels like an old show looking at it but it's just like they've put on these newer styles onto it to kind of have the artwork evolve like they're doing uh motion smears uh mm -hmm. and i really like motion smears so like put them in baby um <laughs> Uh, I, and it just like it's it's like vibrant it feel like the color grading is nice it, it feels the art feels updated but it's still like it's refreshing um at like six, at 75 hertz yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> well um, it, it's it, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing right it's supposed to bring that 90s vibe. it's not the worst thing in the world i I've was never, going to I, ask that i was like it sounds like yeah. the animation at least does what you expect it because if it did yeah. look exactly like it did in the 90s you'd be like this looks like shit yeah, if I'm seeing it, like, your brain wants new. something that's fresh, <laughs> but also wants something that's new. So it sounds like they found that balance. Also, there's like film grain on it. I was surprised yeah. when I like noticed film grain. I was like, ooh, 
Yeah, of my criticisms, that's the lowest t- of, of the tier. My number one is definitely the dialogue, and the second one is they probably should have just updated some. Like like Andrew was saying, I I don't know her name, but the voice actress for Rogue, she does not. It, yeah, it does not sound like she's two years older. She, she sounds, sounds like, like she... Dolly Parton. It's yes, just like, yeah, that's yeah, actually that's no. like, a good one. It throws, it throws you off. I'm just like, is this Dolly Parton? Like, like it's some weird. of the actors, some of the voice actors have died, so they had to replace them anyway. At this point, why not just replace all of them? And that, Cyclops... that, that's an interesting point as well because I, I was wondering. I mean, I've not watched any of this or heard any of them, but, but I think I did read that they were bringing all the original cast back to play characters who were basically the same age as the original cartoon, and that very rarely works well. Yeah ever so i haven't seen the simpsons for about 15 years at this point and i caught a clip for the first time in that time the other day of marge i was like oh my god what happened to your throat like, yeah. what, what she's deteriorating you sound absolutely horrendous i don't remember you sounding like this but you can always tell if, if time has passed in the real life because the, the, the voice is a really really good strong indicator of, of how much time has passed you can't really do too much to hide that even very good voice actors struggle to to replicate the sound of much younger people than they are it's probably secondhand smoke from her twin sisters their older twin sisters that <laughs> she's got throat cancer from that um my, I that old my has cats. a really really big penis <laughs> <laughs> it's just I will doing say, that voice all the time <laughs> i will say this um uh, of the, the voice actors, obviously um the one who played cyclops died so they had to get a new guy he seemed fine he yeah. didn't mm. like it, you know. He, he seemed fine. I wouldn't say he was good or, or bad. He seemed fine. Uh, we mentioned Rogue Wolverine. It's the same voice actor. It's Cal Dodd, yeah. and he yeah. sounds like he couldn't give two shits. Yeah. In the first two episodes, he sounds very bored. Uh, he almost sounds like he sounds like my very early YouTube videos. He has. It's almost like he's dead reading and doesn't understand inflection. Uh, and being a person who did that myself, I can now criticize it. And I'm very upset about that because he was one of the best aspects of the original was his emotion that when you could feel through the voice. And I'm not, I got none of that off the first two episodes. See, I didn't mind the dialogue, but again, this is geared for kids. So like we were taking something and we're trying to, you know, make it, you know, it's bigger well, it's than like what said, it actually it, it, is. But it, it it's not just geared towards, it, they are marketing it in a way to try and, yeah. recapture people that are older as well so you have to take that into account mm-hmm. it's not 100 uh, geared towards kids uh i'm just yeah, curious because like, man children that's what it's for, <laughs> yeah. it's, hey, for um... it, it's for morons who who shave mutton chops and have uh, have magneto masks behind them it's it's for us you know it's... well they introduced nathan summers so i'm just curious now that are they going to bring in the new mutants so like i'm just wondering if that's going to be the next shift to bring this cast in um <clears throat> i'm just curious about that because nathan summers becomes uh, uh, a new mutant yeah, a very on. key player in the later yeah yeah a very key player um, i did like one but... one little thing that they did which i thought was really cool uh, and they did it with morph uh was have him turn into a bunch of characters that we know from the old one uh, from the old series, and obviously, if you read the comics, but the old series, he's turned into Colossus at one point, turned into Death Lady Deathstroke at one point, the Blob at one point, and so it was. It showed the characters that have yet to be debuted. So that was actually a very um, creative way to show people, hey, we don't worry, we're gonna make. If these are your favorite characters, we've already done this. It's gonna happen, which I thought that was very, uh, very smart. Well, and I'm guilty of this too. When they like did the non-binary thing, I'm like, oh my god, where are they going with this? Like, why do we have to do? this kind of shit but morph um they're really portraying him like a deadpool type character the the witty smart aleck kind of character and mm-hmm. it's just like uh do we need to add that to this group because like technically gambit's kind of like that so why do we need morph deck like that as well yeah. so- that was gambit probably had the most quote-unquote woke mm-hmm. moment of the entire thing showing up in this really crazy pink belly shirt to cook bre- breakfast that was probably like the it was like the weirdest thing i've uh, of, of it all because it just threw me off i was not expecting him to be oh, wait, doing that. showed up in a belly shirt that's yeah it's like he, like like they go into hilarious. the kitchen and he's like making breakfast and out of nowhere he just has like this crop top pink t-shirt for and it was like that's uh, how i make pancakes i i was just like problems. okay I've, uh, yeah i i, I saw I've that always, i was like i've always been told cover enough. as much skin as you can <laughs> yeah. when you when you cook bacon but whatever <laughs> it's punk enough 
Honestly, it wasn't the it, it wasn't the worst. Though. It was I was expecting it to be uh, a lot worse with the he really the did ham, the ham fisted mm-hmm. morph looked like a sexual deviant in the original series. Well, yeah, <laughs> with the, they use that same. He does at one point have the same look from that, but he keeps going back to that uh, template look that he has. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it, it didn't go any more ham fisted with its messaging so far that I, than I ex- like I expected to be way worse, and uh, it's pretty much in line with what we already knew. Yeah, mm-hmm. it did. The, the probably the worst line though is actually right in the beginning in terms of bad writing, where the first line is I I I don't know I don't have exactly written down, but it's something along the lines like this: like the first goon says something. Uh, uh, yeah, we're getting ten thousand dollars for every mutie that we for every mutant that we capture, and then uh, Sunspot says something along the lines of like, "Well, I'm the I'm an heir to a huge fortune. I could pay you more." And then that same goon goes, "You think this is about money, mutie? It's like you literally just said it's about ten thousand dollars per mutie." <laughs> I was like, "How could you?" Yeah, have- I was. Yeah, I was like, "What is your goal here?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it was a very it was a very weird how that got past. Because I would think that at least the first couple lines in an episode at least get quality checked a little bit better than the rest of it. And apparently it did not. No, sir. It doesn't sound like it. There you go. As you can see, I really wanted to talk about this. So I had some stuff prepared. <laughs> um, yeah, we talked about it for almost an hour on Thursday. And yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't available. I know, and I still haven't watched the idiot either episode myself but i feel like i have now so yeah do we know why the the director was sacked yet has that come out or is that still firmly on oh that's only fans and um they 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 say that he was difficult to work with he was a real that's what they say always though they always but there's an only fans attached to it and there's feet pics and there's some other stuff that he did i thought they knew that though didn't they i I thought that that was part of the, the point is that they already knew he had an OnlyFans, but it was supposed to be non-sexual content. Apparently, non-sexual OnlyFans is a thing. Um, yeah, and so, okay. Like, and uh, he'd had it for ages. So if that was the reason, why wait until the the eve of production, or the eve of release? Sorry, to get rid of the guy. Well, they probably like I don't know. The the only thing is like they wrapped production and they're like, finally, we can get rid of this guy or something. Yeah, yeah. post like, post production. Um, but that's, that's the only thing I thought I can too. Think of. So like he was he really fired? Didn't he finish the job? Yeah. I, I guess that would be mm. more of a they are you talking really... OnlyFans or the oh. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Well it depends because I know that they have a second season already in the works. So was his contract written in a way that mm. he was signed on for two seasons? Or if it was a season by season thing, it would have just been a non renewal, which wouldn't have been a firing technically. It just would have been you're not rehired. Right. Uh, right it's right. one it's it's one of those things that companies use yep. to get around rules. So. But they did it like they, that's a pretty shitty move. Like they did it, I think, the day of or the day before the. It was like, like two days before, before, yeah, yeah. Before they, like that's a shit move. Like I got. But like I it, mean, went, it went. It went. They announced it and it went official like two or three days before. That's Get showbiz, out. I guess. Hostman says, "I think it's because he was a tyrant in the workplace." Yeah. That was another reason that I saw. Yeah, the OnlyFans, I guess, is just a more interesting title to run with, right? So that's the one yeah. I saw retweeted a lot. Yeah, it's not like breaking news. Boss is a dick. Yeah. Right. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Big dick. <laughs> Big dick. We all watch Roadhouse. Roadhouse. <laughs> um, another topic I wanted to discuss, unless uh, there's anything left on the X Men topic. Nah, nope. flying through these topics though. It's the best and Marvel we, show we so today. far. Yeah, actually, yeah, I will agree with that. Yeah. So far, yeah, I'll agree with that. The, only uh, because all of them are terrible. <laughs> but we've also only seen two episodes, so I'm not. I'm trying not to jump. Listen, too far the next, and... the next, however many, could be the same level of <laughs> like horrendous, but it still has two good episodes, right? Um, another topic I wanted to bring up was uh, what's going on with Kotaku or uh, Kotaku. Can't even oh. say the tacos. Uh, tacos. Tacos. I love those. Um, yeah, this, uh, situation has been fucking hilarious. Um, I don't know who else There's has more? been keeping up on it. I know Vex probably has. She's a video game nerd. I, I but... have. I'm making a lot of tweets about it. <laughs> oh, please. Uh, then would you mm-hmm. like to indulge us and kind of explain to the audience what's going on with Kotaku? 
Oh, okay. So, uh, re okay. Do you want me to start from the beginning with sweeping? Yeah, or just do recently it. Oh, oh, sure. Man. All right. We're only an hour into the show. Bye, right, boys. <laughs> I'm gonna hang on. I'm getting a Red Bull. Be it's right a back. Time <laughs> it's um, okay, so back in January, there was a, a Brazilian gamer who made, uh, he started to notice that there was something kind of off with some games that he was getting. So over on Steam, he made something called the Sweet Baby Inc. Curator, which basically would detect whether this one consultant firm, Sweet Baby Inc., who comes in and does like story and character and narrative consulting to make sure that it fits into basically ESG models. Um, he started like just just curate all the games that this company had worked on. And then he started to notice a pattern. Then in, I want to say it was end of February, one of their, um, I don't know if he's still a current employee or uh, a former employee, but Kiss, Chris Kindred is the username he goes by. He started a cancel campaign being like, Steam, please get rid of this curator. Please delete his account. He started basically this entire thing. And now it's, it's kind of blown up into... Um, Developers and journalists from kind of all parts of gaming are now kind of standing up for Chris Kindred and Alyssa Mercant, who also is kind of like she's Kotaku's senior editor right now. Uh, she's a whole mess of a woman. Um, yeah. But she's also jumped on this like cancel and doxing train kind of deal. And now they, she's playing the victim, much like Chris is as well. Um, it, but it's, yeah, it's erupted into this thing where it's like it seems like more or less that. Everyone who's making games these days for any kind of notable Western developer is part of this ideology and this thinking of which, oh, it's it's okay to put all of this this colored stuff and this gay stuff and all of this into games because games are not for gamers anymore. It's for whoever is developing them. Um, so gaming has more or less become like self-insert fan fiction. Recently, with Kotaku specifically, aside from Alyssa Mercant and her trying to go after Melanie Mack recently, which is a weird thing because Melanie Mack... That's Mac, a crazy not, combo. Yeah and, yeah, and 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 this is not in defense of Melanie Mack because I think I'm not I'm not a fan of hers either. Uh, but Melanie Mack has not really said anything to Alyssa Mercant to kind of warrant that attention, so that's a little bit weird. But apparently, there's a hit piece in the work of some sorts. But Kotaku's, I want to see say it's like their lead writer or something. Um, recently, they were told that they had to start actually like writing game uh, like guides and stuff. You know, like write stuff like about gaming. To? Yeah, instead <laughs> of you know ideological hit pieces. And as soon as she was told that, she fucking quit on the spot. Um, That's because gold. It, it's it, that was, was she, kind did of she weird. quit or was she fired? Like there was she quit. She says quit. she quit because the, the, the yeah. specific thing from the the owners was that we want you to publish. I think it was fifty guides a week, and for yes. those to take mm -hmm. precedence over any news content that you might claim that you're doing. Look, not that Kotaku really does news anyway, but that's what they think they do. Do your job. Make game guides. That's too hard. Pretty yeah. much. It requires yeah. that you actually play the games and sit there and figure out how they work. Those yes. are, that's like the easiest thing to do. Just play a game. <laughs> Follow the tutorial. Hey, post that. That's I yeah. I saw it's... something you tweeted about um about her. Uh, the picture that you tweeted. Oh, the tattoo picture. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I have it here. Hang on, I'm gonna pull. Yeah, this that up. blew up unexpectedly crazy. on Twitter. Oh, it's like a tramp stamp. <laughs> as it should have. All men are enemies. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, hang on, I got it here. Try. Uh, you know, they make it's this okay. as time, uh, friendly as it's possible. Okay. Green content like <laughs> game guides instead of just shoveling up. Yeah, this. that's kind of where it's at. I know that GDC happened last week. Aside from that clip of like 50 developers just kind of like screaming at the patriarchy or some shit like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which they only got 50 people to participate. So considering how many people attend GDC, that's not too bad. Is this actually um, on the screen? I can't no. see it. We not, just not we that. just the uh, Michael, Michael Myers. Myers. Mm. <laughs> Dude, it's the just best Michael frame Myers. In the movie. This, I guess uh, it doesn't want to. That's pull probably up, pretty um... accurate. <laughs> we called okay. and tried to get information, and this is who answered. <laughs> yeah. Well, um... Yeah, I don't. There hasn't been any other major developments. I know that, like, kind of day by day. Now there's like a there's been for a while a growing list of like these other consultancy companies, like Sweet Baby Inc. And people are trying to kind of discover more and more of what's going on behind the scenes. But like, 
Atlanta, nothing seems to have come out of like GDC, which is kind of weird, or at least maybe it just hasn't been revealed yet because it, again, it, it was only last week. So maybe there's still time. I know there was, there were a lot of presentations and panels on like um, diversity in gaming and all of this yeah. stuff. Yeah, there you go. You Men are anime. The, the yeah, they're basically the grasping at straws now. Um, yeah. Where they're yeah, this chick literally. How did this chick that says money? all men are enemies? Holy shit! How did this oh. chick make any money uh, as a cam oh, model? I don't get any. She was I'd a rather... cam model. She was like, yeah. I'd rather yeah. watch Connor McDavid. Yeah. I want to see Connor McGregor than this. Like Jesus Christ! Let's... Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll rewatch his intro from Roadhouse. I want to see Jake Gyllenhaal. So, the, <laughs> like, this is a video. Game I'd rather see Maggie with... Gyllenhaal. That's saying a lot. <laughs> it's a video game website, and this is the person running it who's writing a fucking hit piece. Like this it, is their is, senior editor. That is this so is crazy. Mm -hmm. Which you know what? Hold on, I'm gonna plug myself real quick. If there's any game websites out there that need an actual journalist, I write actual game reviews on actual games on Substack, <laughs> and I'm a person of color and a woman, and I look like a woman. So Trust me, none, none of those are watching this show. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to uh, Nerd Wars. Next. Oh, okay. All right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. just uh, it's it's kind of weird because like I've applied for like uh, like because they do a lot of the freelance hiring, right? But they have all of these really like stringent requirements to become a gaming journalist at any of these sites. And meanwhile, this girl litter like she was actually a whore, and she's publicly stated that she would rather go back to sex work. And she's the senior editor of a gaming news publication. I just if, don't. If she says she would rather go back to sex work, but she hasn't done it, are we to take from that that she's tried and failed? Because obviously, she's just waiting yeah. to get fired, and she's ready to yeah. go. Yeah, she's ready to go back to <laughs> to sex work where she hates Woo! men. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. It's, well, it's kind of there is a market for that. <laughs> right? nope, he's, 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 it's, it's so crazy <laughs> that he's self deleted. Goodbye. C Cynic just got bombed. <laughs> Maybe Sorry. she's gonna get hook up with the ghost to uh... dream. <laughs> it would have been it would have been great if if you would have just came back mid sentence right there and just been like <laughs> I was like I um this button man you have the same thing goodbye, as me where the, yeah yeah the goodbye stream yeah. yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah there was oh, some talk um. Some talk that the Kotaku may be backtracking on this this guides <laughs> requirement, which is it's it's just a terrible idea. Because like on, on a basic point of principle, if you have a very radical activist staff base and they make demands of you as the owners of that website and you mm -hmm. cave to them, then you have lost. There is no way back from that. The only actual response to staff rebellions of that sort is to sack the people who are rebelling. That is the only way you can maintain your power. Well, this is the debate we had on Saturday Night Hypnosis is, does Melanie Mac respond back? And I said, no, why would you feed a starving animal? Like, like, don't just let her die off. Like, she's not doing her job. She's going to be in the, she's in the weeds right now. So well, just Melanie Mac is off. a starving animal too, considering her diet, but that's another that, topic. Like, well, <laughs> I, well, yeah, I <laughs> guess I agree. So like she's she's going after Melanie Mac for a reason. I think we all know why. Like she's like she, loose cannon, and she. But I I'm thinking that she's hopefully not going to respond back, listening what to other her... people in her ear, and giving her the ammo that she can have this big hit piece because. Look at I'm doing a, a hit piece on Melanie Mack who says the word maggot all the time on, on her channel and all these other things. So like it's just Yeah. It's there. Let's see what happens. Um just to I'm gonna I'm gonna not defend, I'm gonna I'm gonna push against you a little bit. I actually want Melanie Mack and Alyssa Mercant to go head to head because then people will finally see that this is legitimately the same person. They're two extremes of the same. It'll be side insane of the point. Yeah. content. Listen, yeah, I, yeah. I, I want to see it because it'll right. just be entertaining. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. It it definitely would. It'd be like Harley Quinn versus you know, Poison Ivy. Yeah, but I mean, it's Harley also, Quinn versus um, the other Harley Quinn. It's also fascinating <laughs> to me that these people do this stuff because, like, people who know who Melanie Mac is and don't like her are like already don't. And the people like yeah. this this isn't going to change anybody's mind about anything at all. Yeah. So I just don't understand the point other than just like um like a personal vendetta or something, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, there's no point to what she's fucking doing. It's there might be a degree of clout chasing and, and drama farming That's, about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. It's going to yeah, get... Yeah. And I was actually just having a quick look at Kotaku's YouTube uh, page, which is really, really fucking depressing. Um, <laughs> like, literally anything you do will get more views than this. So, yeah, by, like, it might actually save the business. Yeah, drama I farm with Melanie Mack. You'll get more viewers than you will from whatever the fuck. Like, is it time for Princess Peach to shine? It's had a thousand views in a week from a actual proper games website that claims to be serious which has more subscribers than my channel does um yeah yeah good one. i have had Program. videos that have plenty less than that i i would like to not mention. yeah but you're not you're not an actual mainstream quote unquote gaming news site that with 364,000 subscribers yeah which you're is irrelevant what seem to have I, I i like being irrelevant it allows me to say yeah. whatever i want mm. yeah, but the the, the, the the really devastating thing for them is that they are not supposed to be irrelevant Whereas you know, you're starting, like it's Fair. fine for you because you're building your thing. They've been going for fucking years. Yeah. They're supposed Apparently, to be relevant. Alisa They've got the subscriber num numbers to be stubs. relevant. Alisa Does she? Has twelve stubs. Apparently, well, she might have just then. deleted everybody else. She's blocked me, and I've never—I didn't even know who she was until last week, and I've never interacted with her. But I did have a quick look, and she's blocked me. I think she's just chain blocked a load of. Yeah, uh, yes, I've, I've been, true. I love when I find out I've been chain blocked, and I'm yeah, like, I have great. no idea why. I can't figure it out. You got blocked by Wikipedia. It was one of the best things to happen last year. It's just fucking funny. <laughs> oh no, the Star Wars wiki. Wikipedia. The Star Wars wiki has blocked me. How could I possibly learn <laughs> which characters you've decided after the fact are trans? Oh no. I, um, well, I got locked out of I got locked out of actual Wikipedia for updating a, an article for Lance with act. He gave me all of the uh, the information. It was legitimate stuff. I. I did everything they asked me to, and I still got locked out. I was like, I don't understand. I did. I, I cited the sources right here. What are? Why are you not letting? So it's it. It's clear that wiki, all wikis just automatically block uh, block people. But I, again, this is a an election year, so I expected the full craziness to come forward. And here we go. We're getting a lot oh, of boy, crazy shit taken forward. Yes, yeah. Oh, it's, the content. Yes, it's a lot of fun watching well, this on the sidelines. I wish I was a political commentator. I'd make so much money. <laughs> try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, try it, it please. Do it. <laughs> you like how somebody in the chat said, Andrew. Somebody in the chat said that uh, was quoting me as saying, I could say whatever I want and then Vex hold my beer. I actually got Mr. Brown demonetized for pretending to be, for for quoting Vex once. So that's a, <laughs> that's a great, <laughs> a great story. I say the F slur on other streams, not, this stream because i know i don't i i think it was the trouble. i think it was uh i don't remember exactly what i said but i was like yeah vex would say it like this and then immediately bang did Shut. anyone talk to you dark hour Air about trick. your uh uh title <laughs> of your last video <laughs> <laughs> which one uh which hang on one? i'll pull it right up the one <laughs> i'll pull it right up hang on please show the dear audience <laughs> i will your honor show the I, evidence i know i know which one you're talking about i i think yeah I, it's changed like, a couple a, I, I, it's it's gone gone up. since i think as i pointed out on on thursday <laughs> no, that he did this, this, did he i not? changed it right back <laughs> was Good. this on purpose hey, I got it, it was it was on purpose i love you he's a clever <laughs> it's boy so funny I, I had to go through a couple of different versions to make it fit properly into the uh see this uh here oh, yeah. i right here Oh yeah, <laughs> it's so. It got good. a whole three hundred views. Don't worry, it didn't really work. It was just really case. funny. He spotted that on on Thursday and pointing out that actually by putting n and asterisks, it makes it sound so much worse Way than if you were actually fucking okay, out. Can you can play the video for all I care. I don't know. <laughs> You might oh, as well wait, just wait. put the ER in there and then just star out everything else. <laughs> what you're Holy going for in that shit. title? Um, it, di it didn't work the way I expected. <laughs> it's still funny. I like it. Yeah. Uh, what was the? Uh, uh, we'll talk after. Never mind. <laughs> it's like the, the Randy Marsh Wheel of Fortune things. I th I think I know yeah. the word, but I don't think I should say it. <laughs> Can I write it down and show it to you? <laughs> <laughs> I had. A, I, I sat down with that for a while, and I was like, "How am I going to approach that?" I mean, did you actually watch the video, Cynic? You probably didn't because it only got three hundred views. The whole that the title is part of the running gag I have through the whole thing, where I sent I self censor myself the whole way. Um, Everyone no, I did not. Video, yeah, I, but I figured you didn't because you would have understood the reference then. <laughs> the reference. <laughs> I didn't watch yeah. the movie. 
No, I'm saying like I, I literally self-censor the whole time. I use Google Speak to censor out the word Negroes the entire That's thing. amazing. <laughs> so it says it now. <laughs> but that was part of the joke, but no one got it. Well, dude, you gotta go with Look, my 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 sense uh, of humor is better now. than everyone else's, damn it. <laughs> Yeah, it's that special is coming out really bright right now. <laughs> <laughs> Our special guest. Yeah. <laughs> um, man, I, yeah, let's talk after because I just love to hear some information about that video. I got some questions. <laughs> Honestly, I just don't think anyone cared about the movie. And that's why no one watched the well, yeah. You might have shot yourself well, in the foot, though, to the extent that YouTube yeah. might actually be thinking, because you've censored it, that you are using the word that you've censored, and it doesn't like that. Maybe that's why yeah. it's not pushing yeah. it. Yeah. No, no, to, be, to the point, though, I mean, I don't know anyone who's actually seen it except for you, I think. Um, I, was, I, know, I, I, was, nerd I may have been the only that. person, and I only went because I thought it was going to be t that terrible. And I was like, I was correct. <laughs> I know I have a fr other other friend who saw it. He was not impressed either. I was I, I was impressed with how stupid it was. If that works. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. I almost went to see it. I was choosing between Ghostbusters, that, and the new Titty Sweetney movie. Yeah, I said she's titties. Oh, it's uh immaculate. It's a, immaculate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't see any of the three. What yeah, did yeah, you end up seeing? None it of them. Nothing. Oh, um, I, didn't go I did see go see. Them. Oh, I went and saw Late Night with the Devil this weekend. Uh, probably will be one of the best films I've seen this year. It was really good. Oh, I I oh that's the one with the weird uh, <laughs> picture I keep seeing all over Twitter. Of, like, it's David, I've only seen one still, and it's of uh, yeah, this, this girl like laying back with her nose bleeding, and yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's the one. one. Yep. Yeah, what's well, uh, that no. about? It's a uh, so late night baby. Takes place, late takes, night place, <laughs> takes place in the seventies. Uh, this guy who's a late night talk show host, he's trying to like get his ratings back up. It's kind of done in a mockumentary oh, yeah, slash yeah. found footage style. Hmm. Um, so on Halloween in nineteen seventy seven, he has all these guests, and he ends up more or less conjuring the devil on live television. Oh. Um, the yeah, the build up is really good. The performances How? are really good. The effects for what they are are really good. Um, it, it breeds some fresh air into the found footage genre as well, which has been kind of stale the last few years. Um, it was it was genuinely good. And it has a lot of it touches like on a lot of interesting kind of religious tones and also like conspiracy theories that I don't know if you can mention on YouTube. I don't know if that's a no, no topic or not. Um yeah, but yeah I, I recommend it. It's it's well I you don't have to see it in theaters because it's not meant for a theater. Uh but it's it's well worth your time watching. I How never horror is seen it? that. How, I, oh sorry, Andrew. Uh, How does that even mean? It? Like I don't like horror movies, so how much horror is in it? What what is safe what's going on with safe mode in my videos? I'm sorry. To hide evil videos? Huh? I don't know what that means. Has options in safe mode to hide evil videos. Um, in terms of horror, there's no space shots if that's what you're worried about, Andrew. It takes place no, on that's Earth. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so constell constellations completely out for Andrew. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll watch it's, that it's, eventually. It's more of that kind of creepy, like is is the devil real kind of deal? Are are cults and Satanism and rituals kind of real? It's that uh, element of horror. The, it, it's like, Max, the answer to all those questions is yes, isn't it? <laughs> the, um, Oh, so it's, it's not based, scary at all. So <laughs> it's based in the 70s or 60s or 80s? It takes or place Halloween 1977. Okay. and Because when I saw the the uh, trailer, it looked like uh, scanners to me uh, uh, a little bit. Just the way they were doing the, you know, convulsing. Oh, how they edited it. Nope. Oh, yeah. It's, scanners is the one where, like, they stare at people and their heads explode, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it's uh, I, it actually type. finally got me out of my YouTube funk, so I'm in the process of writing a script for that because I really, really enjoyed it. It was oh, didn't you say, awesome. wait, whoa, 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 didn't you say you were gonna watch Arcane after your uh, 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 mm. investigative whatever show, detective show? Are I don't mean, uh, I might have said I need to watch Arcane, but I don't remember if it was right. I remember, after. I remember, I tried, I tried, rewind it, bring, I tried. bring up the tape. Bring up the I remember this clearly. You were like, I will watch Arcane after I'm done with my detective show script. 
uh, that detective show script is not done. <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're in you're in my favorite zone. The multiple oh, this, script zone. No, this is gonna be it's like fantastic. all over again. Where it took he was like, Yeah, I'll watch it by the end of the year. And then like a week before uh New Year's Eve, he's like, Oh yeah, now I'll watch it. I was like, Okay. I don't I, I fulfilled my promise. I said before yeah. the end of the year and I watched it over Christmas and I had like five Ooh, days left of the year in which to watch it. It was great. <laughs> Happy to have seen it. And then, and then you were pissed because you had to wait a whole year to watch season two. Yeah, but unlike you, you have to you had to wait like three years for season two. So yeah. you know, technically, I win. It's best to wait I, for okay. these things. That's go. why I'll I'm waiting for Arcane. season two. There you go, Andrew. Oh my god! <laughs> that way, I don't have to wait like you did. Like you told me to watch Invincible, and luckily, it was I like did. three months before season two came out. So yep. didn't have to wait as long. Andrew only has two modes, Arcane and Dune. Hey, you're figuring you're forgetting about Andor, right? That's another that's true. Yeah. yeah, the three modes. That's one of the them one that started it. <laughs> yeah, one, one, one of them is will fight anybody, literally anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone in the chat see uh, Immaculate? It only opened to like five million dollars. Very small horror movie. Man. Uh, but I heard so the ending a... was really. I don't even know. I wouldn't even say divisive, I guess. Everyone's just shocked by it, I heard. To tell you the truth, that's I'm probably gonna... more than it would have made if not for the fact that there was just this surge of Sydney Sweeney thumbnails yeah. everywhere. Like, I, I, I have a feeling it would have probably done half of that or less had it not been for her. Yep. Someone on Twitter made a little web extension that automatically turns all pictures of Sydney Sweeney in your Twitter timeline into photos of Chairman Mao. Which <laughs> I quite like. Uh, <laughs> like that. Oh, that reminds me of there's a. There's another one. It's a YouTube extension that just adds pictures of cats into every thumbnail. Um, I should just do that with Sydney Sweeney. That'd be great. I, I'd click on every video. Um, I do want to address Neil in the chat there. If you think that random film talk broke down Arcane, you should come check out what we did on my channel. We'll yeah, you did like a, episode. an episode every episode, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm gonna watch Immaculate probably later this week. There's a decent cam copy up on the on the seas right now. So I do like the premise. The premise sounds very interesting. That's why I'd like to check it what out. What was the premise? I don't know anything about this movie other than Sydney Sweeney's in it. Basically, a nun to somehow it to know. gets uh, pregnant somehow. Immaculate conception, and it dives into kind of this kind of gross horror terrifying look into motherhood and religion and feminism and how those all intersect sort of is the basic premise yes okay sounds i do yeah. i'm gonna I've been, i want to I, I watch that late night with the devil uh because that one piqued my interest i'm gonna see it was really good it was really good Got i haven't found a, a copy yeah. online yet so but i'll let you know when there is one because it does remind me of Scanners. So, <laughs> so, uh, I like Scanners. They're re-releasing that in theaters. Sydney Sweeney was conceived by the Metaclorians, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> she stores all of her Metaclorians in very specific places. <laughs> yes, she does. Everyone has Metaclorians now. <laughs> Not as many as her. Yeah, she's she's packed full of Metaclorians. Yeah. Yeah, this is also one. true. I'm just going to throw that in there because it's a bugbear. But yeah, it's correct. Well done. Damn, uh, she's uh, Princess Fiona. One of our mods uh, is against you guys. I just found Arcane boring. It was bad, just uninteresting. I don't care. I haven't watched it yet. I'm waiting until the second season is like right around the corner. I'm going to watch it all clean through. So. Boring it's, it's, is not it's, an argument. Yeah, it's it's not. I mean, I don't know yeah. if she was making an argument, but I think the same response is to, to people who call Andor boring probably holds. If you find it boring, you are not paying attention. It's it's yeah, a fairly good blanket <laughs> response, and it's almost invariably true. Like, it, I can I can feel it. I can feel it. The heat's coming off of Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Bo if boring is your main argument, goodbye. You're gone. Which which means he's just gonna leave. He's just gonna like I'm gone. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> There's also I mean, the possibility that you know it's, it, an it's, it's only about the children, quote unquote. It's not. It's actually that's not even true of the first three episodes. But there are only children prominently featured in the, the first three episodes. And if you hate children, you'll like episode three. Oh, and then, you, then it, it takes up after that point. Um, and no, Andor wasn't boring too. Just just reeling off the bad takes in the chat. 
Yeah. Get him! Damn, look at all these Me platoon on the same side. Well, and we said this on, on the show, character. like the the, psych, the psychological aspects of the show is like top notch. The way they develop the characters, it's like unreal. Like it's brilliant the way they portrayed these characters. Oh, so the writing is If subtle. you think that's boring, then... You didn't get to th- episode three, Fiona? Ooh. Oh my god. Of Ooh. Arcane or of Andor? Of Arcane. Uh, I'm guessing it's Arcane. In which case, you're just not qualified to judge. It's like picking up yeah. uh, like uh, crime and punishment, looking at the cover and saying, ah, it's boring. I always I always say you gotta watch at least three episodes of a show before you can really give it a... And, or or uh, if they're yeah, short episodes... Room. If if they're short episodes, if it's like twenty minute episodes, it's six. You need to get you need to get over two hours worth of content before you could really uh, that's, judge yeah. a, uh, a show. Especially with Arcane, the way it's a movie, it's a little different. It's three but... like three m- movies in terms of like there's three up like every arc is three episodes long, so there's it's like three little movies in a TV show. I think I probably like because when I it took me so long to watch it, I think because I'd started watching it back when it first came out and I probably did get to episode two and I didn't not like it, I think, but I think I I just drifted away because I had other things which seemed like more pressing and important to do. So it, it must not have grabbed me first time by episode the end of episode two. Um, but That's it would be it was wrong too. to conclude from that that A, it was um, bad, B, it was boring, or C, it's not worth continuing with because it uh, it really does kick off after that. I watched episode one on premiere night, like they did this whole live event and they just like a bunch of Twitch streamers and YouTube streamers who were in the league community, like were just able to stream the first episode, like with zero copyright. So I was like, all right, free TV. I'll watch this first episode. And I watched the first one. And then I was like, I'll pick this up eventually. And then it took me like mm-hmm. six months to finally pick it up again. And I was not disappointed. And I also, there's the stigma because it's based on League of Legends. So. Mm-hmm. Which is always a turnoff for people. I told my friend, I was like, you got to watch the show. And they're like, the League of Legends show? And I'm like, please, give it a chance. I know. That's why I'm going to That's why I'm gonna watch Andor again. Because my first time watching it, I just did not care for it. Yeah. So, um, just, I'm going to watch it again. The, the last comment. I mean, it's a, a yes and no. It's Of course, it's the onus is on the artwork to interest you. Um, but it is all... Actually, no, it's not the case that the audience is just this, this pliant massive of unintelligent unsentient jelly which is waiting to be stimulated but you do have a responsibility if you are you know if you claim that you care about storytelling and things like that you actually have to take a mindset into the things that you're watching you do have to you do actually have to engage your brain from the start and not just wait for some mindless piece of stimulation to prod you into life so it's not as simple as saying that art has a responsibility to you and you have no responsibility to it you, you are an active engagement active engager in the thing you're consuming, ideally. And that's the way to approach it. After that, if you are going into it with, you know, you're fully engaged and you're, you're looking at it critically, whatever, and you're paying attention, and if after three episodes you can say, no, nah, it's not for me, or no, it's fairly boring, you can actually then give answers as to why that is the case. What is it not doing that makes you not want to continue with it? If, however, you're simply staring at it blandly like you're watching a 50-second TikTok video, which, to be fair, is what a lot of people consume these days, and that's the level of engagement you're bringing. Then you get to the end of episode three and you say, well, it's boring. I don't trust that you're actually paying attention. So actually you're failing in your responsibility to the thing you're consuming and not the thing being put in front of you. Yeah, I think it's the art's responsibility to draw you into it. And that goes through like marketing and all that. Once you make the decision to engage with it, you do have some semblance of responsibility um, to engage with it fairly, to give it a shot. So. Well, the other thing too on, on on Platoon's point, there's so many people out there that just want to say woke uh, right away when they see a female lead or like some kind of diversity thing. But I mean, like we I, we had this with Blue Eye Samurai. Oh, it's woke. It's not woke. It's really well written. Uh, you, you're, what you're, is woke? You're just... Is there? Can we like we just don't, definitively women. define what women woke vex. is? Because that's that's what woke thought, is. It's like, not woke. Is... I I don't consider that woke. I consider woke as someone believing in their this uh, activist thought of that there needs to be diversity no matter what, and it has to be put in, be it female, yeah. race, sex, religion, yeah, whatever I, it is. I agree. It woke has is to be the forefront. But it has to be the forefront. It's not. It's not taking back seat to anything. That's the way I look at woke. 
I could be totally wrong. I, I'm sure Platoon will correct me. I don't know. Uh, that's the way I look at it. But like, I, I'm tired of the... people taking things and putting it under a microscope and just pointing, oh, that's woke, that's woke, that's woke. Like, no, well, it's, it's um... a really good story. And like, I brought up a point of uh, an, an arcane where there was, I just kind of noticed that, you know, some diversity was a little more obvious in the in the episode i think it was what eight andrew or nine or whatever it was yeah eight, and I, I think and i just brought it up as a point like do you guys notice this a little bit more or is it just me like like me having that lens on like it was just like so like i know that i can get i can have that lens sometimes and i gotta take it off and take another look at it and say and just enjoy the story which i did i love the the storytelling um but i mean that's where that's me that's my opinion so whatever i think that like i think it is completely contextual and yeah. uh it's more of if it's i don't know when i go and watch a movie i try and just watch the movie and if it's glaringly obvious it's glaringly obvious and that's when i talk mm -hmm. about it or mock it in my videos mm -hmm. i don't like go in uh usually expecting or thinking about it whatsoever and also the mere presence of it doesn't mean that it's fucking bad yes mm -hmm. yeah it's like, know, like that's that's the thing that bothers me i think is when someone's like oh this one fucking tiny percent it you know what it is it's like uh someone fucking copywriting a youtube video because it has 10 seconds of like an audio clip or a song or something and the video is like three hours long and they get you know they can take the video down or whatever like that didn't that's unfair and not really mm -hmm. um you know it's not worthy of what they're doing to it and also me judging a movie because it has like some woke elements or whatever the fuck um it depends on the severity it depends on if it's like glaringly obvious that that was a focus over good storytelling or they compromised here to prop up this end of it it's all i i try and take it movie by movie and it's mere and existence doesn't mean it's bad yeah like uh usually usually i ask people's definitions of woke because it, it woke doesn't have a definition like anymore a spectrum um and i'm like <laughs> okay what is it and then they answer me and then like for example arcane it's like is diverse yeah it's diverse mm -hmm. it's got lesbians oh god um it's got ideas of revolution um but none of that's bad like diversity is great when it's done well. Like mm -hmm. it's very important when it's done well. Um, but when it's not, when it's, when it's done poorly, that's why it's a big problem when diversity is done poorly because then you're just treating people like uh, boxes to check. That's when it's bad. Um, and Arcane doesn't do that because it actually writes characters. Right. And it's usually glaringly obvious when it is yeah. too, because all you got to do is check the credits, and you're like, "Who wrote this? <laughs> oh, a fucking <laughs> activist wrote this, not an yeah. actual writer." You know what I yep. mean? Like, yeah, that's when it's really annoying. Um, that's when it's too far. But yeah. Uh, well, you notice it right in the dialogue right away. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Because it, it's not nat nothing's natural, and that right. and the thing with Arcane and Blue Eye Samurai, uh, even you could even say Roadhouse. There was a black Road bar House. owner, like. I'm sure, but it made sense well, with where it was taking place, right? Yeah, exactly. I didn't, I didn't even. I didn't. My mind. But yeah, I know. I didn't. I didn't. But I could see someone saying that because mm -hmm. that's how sensitive people are to everything that's being put out there. So it's just like, I mean, besides the like, Roadhouse was just really bad in general. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, like in, in Arcane and Blue Eye Samurai, <laughs> for those two episodes that we did reviews on, even even Scavengers Reign, everything's just natural. The story takes the forefront not anything else so and like there's uh, a scene with the the lead character she one of the lead characters where she is a lesbian but like it's it's kind of brushed off like it's just like it's just a moment and, it, and it's done really well it's written well it's the scenes done well like it's 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 just one of those things that you just have to like i don't know i, I just accept it for what it is like it's just mm -hmm. a great story i don't look at it any any other way but I can see where people are going to point it out and say, "Look, that's I'm not lesbians that. are not yeah. allowed to exist. <laughs> yeah. um, they don't know, that's exist." The, that's going to be the slightly <laughs> annoying thing that, that probably does come forward because, like, it, I think it, it ties into the the sort of the, the boring criticism as well. Is that you can so, you can see why people have these immediate sort of responses like as soon as they see something that because because we're, we're simultaneously given so much more choice, we have so little time in which to consume it, and also there is such a common thread 
undermining a huge amount of of what could otherwise be good entertainment that you had many people are kind of pushed and incentivized into making these snap decisions it seems diverse or a character says something which sounds which a woke person could have said therefore it's woke i'm going to go watch something else because there's 50 other thousand other things i could be seeing on 15 different platforms i don't have time to be putting up with this shit i understand that immediate response but unfortunately it does lend itself to bad responses this is the kind of thing when you do get to the point where oh yeah lesbians are in it must be woke can't exist thing has female character must be woke therefore bad and you can ask these same people like in the context of video games did you say the same thing of tomb raider when that first came out oh no you didn't but it has a female lead and she's a strong female lead did you say it of alien no everyone knows that that's the classic example that woke people throw out by saying if this film came out today you'd all be claiming it was woke I actually think there's a bit of truth to that in that people are now so quick to respond to these basic signifiers of wokeness, which are not exclusive to wokeness, that they don't ever bother giving the thing a chance to begin with. Um, And I'd I'd quite like to move away from that, but that does entail giving things a bit more of a chance than I think some parts of the audience are willing to at the moment. I also understand why, too. It's hard to trust them with their... You know what I mean? It's hard to trust the movie studio uh, with such a poor track record over the past 10 years. Well, Mm -hmm. someone brought up Ray from... um from star wars well that was that's your typical mary sue right there there's like hmm. there's no development in that character you're not involved with the character at all like you you're just she's just granted all these special abilities and she's perfect at all of them um and neil made the comment of if, if it was she was more like misu from blue-eyed samurai it, it would be a better story and i agree like you have to have these hurdles that these characters have to go through the 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 you know you get the people invested into into that character ray there's zero uh, and so that's why it's like people want to label it woke or mary sue or whatever you want to label it um but yeah i i mean uh, that that was so many years ago so I, I, I movies are kind of shifting a little bit better they're writing i like to think they're writing a little bit better now um for some for some shows um i mean I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on it, but I mean... Well, we have Alcolite to look forward to. <laughs> um, before <laughs> before we move on, I do have to uh, see Dark Hour out. Uh, we've kept him five minutes past his bedtime it, already. Yes, it's 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 very much I have to go, but uh, it's fun as always. I don't have really anything coming out in the immediate future. I'm working on a, a, a couple of videos, so if anybody's uh, like expecting stuff from me, uh, you can keep an eye out. I decided last minute I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a uh, video on the fight scene from Ro- from Roadhouse. Roadhouse. So, uh, but yeah, I, I've I've already written half that script, so that that won't be that long from now. But yeah, it was always it's fun as always, and see all you guys again soon. Yeah, thanks yeah. for stopping in, man. Take it easy, dude. Bye. Oh, and then there were five. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. Um. Shit, I I already forgot what we were complaining about. Well, uh, we're talking about woke? the woke. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, there was a comment I wanted to pull up. Uh, sorry, Andrew, go ahead before I pull this up. Oh, I just said I brought up Alkali, and I didn't know if that was also uh, on the top list. Alkali. Um, <laughs> is Alkali the opposite of uh, acidite? <laughs> Wait, did I say it wrong? Yeah. Acolyte. I think you said Alkali. Oh, I said, oh, I said Alkali. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, he's still learning language. It's okay. They both sound the same. <laughs> Hey, but, I barely, um, yeah, I barely speak English. Uh, Hammer Biotech said, "I would disagree with the idea that a small amount of objectionable content can ruin a film for people." Yeah, and it, you know, person to person, whatever. Um, and there are times where, in uh, like I said, I try and take it case by case. And there are times where that's happened to me. Like last year, I was watching Scream Six, and the ending ruined the whole fucking movie because the killers were the white guys, and no fucking shit. Like it just ruined oh. the entire movie for me, uh, you know. That's it's just how it so... was for the King's Man for me. Yeah, it's it just one... like it, like the, the, the need to make sure that the killers were like white people because you couldn't possibly, you know, have like a black serial killer or anybody, anything like that. No, because like, they the have need to die. for that black ruined any sense of surprise. It was so, you know, it like the movie suffered because of that decision. Um. So, for me it was yeah, uh case by case. it was um the the king's man uh there was a decision like i don't i'll spoil it the movie's been out forever it's it's not good um the the kid of the father who's the main character so it's like this buddy cop relationship between 
uh, the son and the father. The son, for some reason, still wants to go into the military, even though he's been he's been being a he's a spy. He's a super spy. And he, for some reason, he wants to go into the military still. So he goes into the military and then he gets shot in the head in the mid middle of the movie. There's no like and it, it's all set up in the first Kingsman movie. I think that the son dies. But the son doesn't get any like last heroic moment. He just becomes a spy. Then he's like, I want to go in the military, goes into the military and then dies in World War One. It's none of it's fun. And it ruined the entire movie. That's the first Wait, time what, I've almost walked out. What was this out. again? The King's Man. Oh, that sounded like Dial of Destiny. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that sounded a lot like why Mutt was dead. <laughs> the exact same point. <laughs> you know what? Mutt was the kid from The King's Man. It, 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 the King's Man is actually Indiana Jones uh, uh, four and a half. Uh, Indy becomes a super spy during World Ooh. War One. He goes back in time, I guess. Yeah. With the dial. Right. And that continental drift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with Hannibal. Forgot about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have anything else to contribute to this topic. Right? Woke is exhausting indeed, I think. It is, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just I curious. I use it as a joke anymore. <laughs> it's just yeah. a joke. Yeah, it's funny now. Yeah. No, it's just, I, I wonder because, you know, the, the, the Barbie scenario this past summer and now X-Men 97, it's like there's no, it's much like how the left calls everyone racist, right? It just feels like woke has no meaning anymore. It's yeah. just a, a word that people throw out when they don't have an argument or they mm -hmm. feel that they have to justify their own bias. That's it. So I'm just curious, like, what does everyone define as woke? So... Yeah, well, I was wondering what like steel people man defined argument. as uh, incels earlier. Because what did someone what did someone <laughs> say to me again? A, 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 a cum sucking incel. incel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that, great. Yeah, yeah. On one of my videos. Thanks for the cum sucking incel perspective. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good. Oh. I heard that in prison too, so I, I can't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was great because incels don't come. So how does he have come? <laughs> yeah, and I know. also, That's... like, he had like a Ukraine flag as his picture. So I just thought I'm like, well, up here, come sucking. He's an actual pop. Nazi. Then <laughs> I, know, I just thought that was like hyper homophobic of him too. And coming from such a progressive person, I just thought that was strange. But his girlfriend must be looking for a husband in the U.S. or something. Who knows? Like, a, it's... <laughs> mm. ah, mail order bride, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> um, um, was there anything else that anybody else wanted to talk about today? Are there any other topics? Really? Velma 2 I... is on the title. Oh, right. Velma Woo! 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was on the Ooh. thumbnail, wasn't she? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that was confirmed for the summer. I forgot about Velma. Uh, yeah, and how could you forget about Velma? End of April. Another good it, segue. Yes, end of April. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Money. <laughs> you know what my biggest regret with the original Velma was? I didn't review every episode. That was it. I reviewed like the first two and then just couldn't do it anymore. And if Velma season two is coming out, it means I have to go back and finish the job and watch the rest. Yep. My regret I is not watching the... it sooner. Yeah, I missed the boat on Velma and I should have gotten on that boat because I am Velma technically. Like Velma is supposed to represent me. <laughs> So I'm going to, I'm going to check out, I'll check out Velma season two. Um, I can't wait yeah. for the next avatar. I can't wait for your next avatar. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have more money to burn, which is what HBO max is fucking great at. So. Also, well, I think they, it was probably the case that the, like two seasons were baked in when they signed the deal because you, you yeah, got that yeah. conversation when it was announced like, oh, it's only because all you YouTubers are hate watching the show that it got a season two. It's like you don't have a clue how any of this I mean, works, sure. do you? Yeah, no, I mean, like, bring, it's the I same guess. idea as Rings of Power. They got a season two because it was making baked it popular. into the contract. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, was there? Wait, hold on. Was there something specific with the news with Velma season two that we wanted to discuss, or just that it's coming out? Just, we just wanted it's coming. Throw it like out the, there. You know, prostate yes, cancer or a stroke. All right, That's... all right. Velma two is excited. as inevitable it's as death. It's, it's well, I am going to my doctor, so 
<laughs> did uh did Velma season one do week by week episodes or did it all drop at once? I believe it was weekly from what I, you don't know it yeah. was weekly because I was doing okay. a video on it every week. Yeah, that was fun. Okay, fun cool. times. I owe a lot to Velma. Um in terms Velma of money and, and subscribers. It was uh, <laughs> it was a really fun time. Although it was also one of the most like, like soul crushing moments on YouTube is the first Velma video, which I think shot up to like two hundred and fifty thousand views in the space of about three hours and then got hit with copyright. And at the time, oh. the channel wasn't big enough for me to go straight to appeal, so it was just dead. Um, oh. so that that could have gone so, so even better than Velma did, and Velma already went pretty well. Um, so I'll, I'll just be looking at it just for old time's sake, really, and maybe the true friends are the ones who watched Velma with us along the way. <laughs> My friend forced me friend to watch it. Velma when it came out. He's like, bro, you gotta watch it. Like a, like He a liked it, unironically? No, he was like, this is oh. so bad, you have to watch it. Oh. And then I did, and then I shot him. Well, it's funny because they have <laughs> they, he's have, dead now. they have Clown High back on where Clone like, High, that's, that's, Clone or Clone. Cl what do I call Clown? Cl uh, clown, clown High, high yeah. yeah, Clone High, uh, and they they brought that back, and um, there's new episodes for that ep uh, show, and I thought, oh boy, here we go. This this potentially is... could be. It's actually pretty good i like it is that the show funny. that lord and miller did or like early yes. in their career where yes. it's like yeah. yeah it's that show they brought that yeah. back hold yeah on. Cold get... Night season two was fucking terrible jay hold on let's it got uh no it's pretty funny didn't, didn't no the... it wasn't funny at all it ba it assassinates basically everything that made that first season so golden and they do exactly what we worried about which is inject a lot of modern day politics but not in like the quirky kind of satirical way that the first season did who wrote it so all like all the shit that made that first season really great is fucking gone. The fact that they even brought it back and didn't bring Gandhi back because of that whole dumb controversy. <laughs> like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> well, he's still there. I, I mean, I only watched the first episode, so I should, like, shouldn't. Yeah, I watched up I mean... to episode five, and it just got progressively worse and worse. And oh, that first okay. episode, you could say is okay at best, but yeah. it's, oh my god, it's god awful. It is god fucking awful. Because the yeah the first episode I'm like oh they're kind of poking fun at themselves and they could say okay I can handle this um, I was gonna watch the second episode but now that you say that I'm not gonna bother it's it's just or maybe a bunch I will. of fat pink haired lesbians and they're all black now as well and they have that oh. ugly painter with a mustache they all basically become the main characters because they have to be the main characters since it's the 2020s now. Uh, okay, so, then never mind. Yeah, yeah, it was a uh, uh, hammer biotech, the Gandhi controversy. So when Clone High season one was going, so the has anyone else on the panel watched Clone High? I don't think so. It's Lord and Miller, of course, it I watched is. It, but okay, the whole premise was like it was a cartoon. It was originally on MTV back in two thousand and one. Yeah, that's and the whole premise remember. was like the secret society started cloning famous people, and they put mm -hmm. them all in the high school to grow up, and you just kind of follow the antics. So one of the main characters was Gandhi, but instead of being kind of like the peaceful historical figure, he was just like a fucking sex addict and an absolute dog. So people in India yeah. took offense to that. <laughs> and they had to, the show was kind of like, it, it was put into limbo after that because they had to remove the character from the show because there was such an issue with, with the historical figure being portrayed that way. Well, and they, then did, that, they didn't junior. just get a, they didn't just get offended. They went on hunger strike. Yeah. Which is also funny. <laughs> That is crazy. Yeah, and that basically killed season two and why it took over 20 years for it to happen anyways. Yeah. Great hmm. first season, though. That's probably some of the best TV out there. It's hilarious. Absolutely. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was excited. Okay, I guess that's in the shitter now. So uh, that sucks. May I just, just very briefly and off topic, just, just because I'm being slandered in chat by the Fiona who thinks says I think Picard season three is good. <laughs> um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure that if you go back, everything I've ever said about Picard season three is it's clear it's cleared the lowest of bars by being better than seasons one and two. And it's mostly just a key jangling display of averageness. That's not the same thing as saying it's good. I appreciate yeah, it's a say. subtle distinction, but if you have more of a mind to subtle distinctions, you might find you can enjoy Andor more. So um yeah, take that mm. as a lesson away. Or arcane. Throw it out there. Wait, anyway, what? carry on. 
Oh, yeah, okay. No, she doesn't like RK much either. But yeah, yeah. No, I, I was. I'm just. I'm now just Women. trolling chat because I'm tired. But there we are. <laughs> um. Well, any other uh, thoughts on Velma season two? I guess because uh, clearly we had fucking none. <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm. I'm very excited to be finally represented yet again in 2024. <laughs> I hope Mindy Kaling gets another presidential medal oh. for her work doing absolutely I nothing. Do too. She got one of those. I she? forgot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This that was world. astonishing. It's amazing. Um, well, we have a few more super chats that came yeah. in that we can go through. Just, just very briefly, does anyone think Velma will get the same level of coverage and attention as season one got? Because like my, I probably will cover at least one bit of it because why not? You know, I owe it so much. But mm -hmm. I'm wondering whether or not it might be one of those things that's a bit played out, given that you know we've all had our like massive fun at its expense. Maybe it won't be as shocking if season two comes out if it's just more of the same. I don't know if anyone like has any anticipation for Velma finding new levels of depravity to plumb. I what is I'm actually covered? question. Yeah, I don't think it will hit as hard. I think maybe those first one or two episodes will probably garner people, but I imagine that much of the narrative and the criticisms will be as same as the first one. So I it will be one of those things that drops off. Like I think Rings of Power season two will drop off too. Uh, just because so many people have covered it, right? Just like Velma. Yeah. So what else is there really to say if they're sticking true to the same trajectory? And I think I think people are more they're gravitating towards more of the stuff that they want to watch and want to hear about. I think they're kind of tired of hearing a lot of yeah. you know, negative takes on things. So I'm kind of that's kind of the vibe I'm getting because, like, I, even on Saturday Night Hypnosis, you, you get a like when you're on there, you hear a lot of people talk about let's talk about things that we actually like. Now, like, like, and I mean, even on my show, like, you, you get that. So, I mean, that's that's uh, that's my general consensus on it. Like, I mean, Rebel Moons Two is going to be coming out, and we're all going to oh, we you know, love that. Feel that we're going to have a field day on that one um, mm -hmm. because that's going to be the hot sequel to the first trashy. You know, the best sci-fi movie, so. movie ever made. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Space vaginas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Blue waffles. I've just also been threatened now because yeah, I'm going to be bullied into covering all the Velma. Actually, now now I think about it, yeah, that probably is true because I'm pretty sure my first Velma video says something. It opens with like, "This will probably be the only video I make on Velma," but then so many people <laughs> in chat and comments just bullied me into carrying it on. I had to. Um, so yeah, it, it might be that again. We'll see. There's always that to be oh. forty. I oh god, is Rebel Moon two? When is that? That's in next April month, isn't it? Nineteenth, I think. Is that also it? Fuck Velma and Rebel Moon in one month. Oh my goodness, yeah. Jesus! Are you guys down to come back on and do the second part? I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we gotta finish see if my part. see if my theory works. I think she's actually uh, like uh, what's his nuts? Uh, like she's a <laughs> cyborg. <laughs> Huh? I think a she's a cyborg. cyborg. That's why we she didn't get. Yeah, I think she's got mechanical parts. Like, uh, uh, what's his name there with all the, you know, hentai. So hentai. what you're saying is that during no, all of those yeah, yeah. fight sequences where people could have taken her out, she was just slow because she hadn't been properly lubricated. <laughs> could be Tin Man effect. I don't know. I agree okay. With. All right. <laughs> Who knows? I... <laughs> <laughs> I've got to do because I pro uh, I said to myself I'm going to review it and I deliberately didn't review part one because I was going to wait for part two, so I didn't have to do two videos. But now I, I'm dreading it because I'm going to have to rewatch part one and you then could part wait two until the extended cut in no. August. And then <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> That's a hot take. Come on, muter. I don't want more of it. No, God. it's going to be fucking long enough as it is. But then you can focus on Velma. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Or you can have oh, okay. B.A. Turner come on and have a debate with him about... Uh, we should definitely do that on your channel, because I can't be doing <laughs> that shit on mine. But, um... Not allowed to touch his channel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fiona, I do love you, really. I am just joshing. But yeah, I recommend watching 1, 2, and then 3. If you still find it shit after that, then it's definitely not for you. But um, but yeah, I would recommend covering all three. All right. Must. Maybe. That's not a bad call, though. I think you have to go at 10 times speed for some of the slow-mo scenes. Because mm. remember that there was that one gets... scene in part one where the guy jumps onto the bird, but it starts oh. in slow-mo, then goes super oh. slow-mo, then even back to regular slow-mo. Slow <laughs> it goes oh. even slower-mo. 
I think you got to oh, watch it on Ted Ty's feet. Slower mower. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awful. Um, well, uh, I, God damn it. She, uh, la- last week, someone told me how to pronounce that. Is it Genma? Genmai? Genmai. Genma. Oh, it's a hard Genma G. Cha? Genma Cha. Uh, I forget. For a California $2. Well, anyway, Andrew, you need to wax your fucking mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Give it some shape. <laughs> I'll grow it out. I'm I'll sorry if I'm mispronouncing stash. your name. Uh, can you type it out like I'm, you know, a five year old? Hold on. How to Let me sound go to like... it out, and I can do it. I'll have Google tell me what it sounds like. There you go. Uh, Jan Grabberskonk. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Not... Every time. <laughs> Every time, right? Is that what's... <laughs> uh for what was this 50 something polish polish yes um thank you uh cynic here's a joke to support your stand-up i don't get why people were upset with netflix's cleopatra jada is just as faithful to history as she is to her husband <laughs> <laughs> work that into your set nice. that, that's good. Very good. I, I think you should take that because it's pretty fucking good tell your friends um film comics explained for an ass ten dollars Howdy, movie cynic, little platoon, cannoli. Uh, cannoli. Cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> what? You have been what? Don't yeah. worry, dude. Dark hours, you know, Joe Rogan. So. Well, still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cannoli. Thanks for being here. It was last minute. Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. I thought I invited cannoli too. This is fucking crazy. Who are you? I got um, MMM to do right away. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I got an MMM in an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have y'all seen the three body problem? David Benioff and DB Weiss have butchered another great book series. It's uh, it's interesting. This comes up because someone actually recommended this show. To, it's a, a Netflix series. Uh, mm. They recommended this to me today and said it was actually really good. Mm-hmm. I heard that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That and Chicken Nugget. I love. Oh my god, nugget. Chicken Nugget's a chicken ten nugget. out of ten. You have to watch yeah, it. It's yeah, so good. <laughs> yeah. It's, what? it's a Korean show about a, oh, a young yes. woman who is turned into a chicken nugget. Yes, I heard about this. Now it's this great. this is real cinema, guys. You know what? It it sounds stupid, it sounds but it's peak. actually surprisingly good. Like it hits all the right satire notes. It doesn't lean any which way in terms of politics. Um, when it has touching it? moments, they're actually touching. The acting is good. Like it's genuinely a good show. Like mm-hmm. nine and a half out of ten. I loved it. Yeah. I why would it be why would it be political? It's a chicken nugget. Well, it's <laughs> you can make anything political these days, right? Like there so, like, was there's socialist, one scene. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just thinking of I'm just trying to think of ways that it could be political. <laughs> well, like there's there's one scene where um because like they're trying to figure out like if if she's the chicken nugget, like where is she? And then they end up doing a spoof of Interstellar, where I remember where she Murph or someone comes up behind the bookshelves, and then they can see into. The, but it's her no. behind all these cart like cartons, yeah. and she's looking at herself yeah. as a chicken yeah. nugget. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. No, it's, don't leave. Don't in the leave. words of Andrew, in the words of Andrew, no. it's peak. It's it is peak. peak. It is it's definitely it is peak. peak. That sounds like oh, just sorry. a movie I, I based it. on the. Uh, it sounds like a movie based on the sentence. Would you love me if I was a worm? Maybe it's based <laughs> on a web comic. Um, so, uh, Waylon Bacephus for a dollar ninety nine says, "I can fix Melanie Mac." <laughs> Good luck, uh, Waylon, unless you're Jesus. Unless yeah, you're Jesus, with, I don't think so. I can fix her with the amount of people that you claim you can fix. I'm really disappointed so far. I think your PP game is pretty weak just saying can i can i just give comment of the night award very quickly because uh the gourd king has done what dark hour would do if dark hour was covering the show (laughs) (laughs) you know what reverse reverse super chat give him five bucks (laughs) (laughs) all the super super chat money from tonight is going to gourd king (laughs) 
Uh, film comics explained for another ass ten dollars. Thank you. Uh, my friend Remy actually plays Marcus in Arcade. He did a terrific Ooh. job along with the rest of the cast. I was genuinely surprised and very impressed by the story and characters. Not biased at all. That's crazy. Yeah, that's right. that's pretty wild. He knows a Marcus. <laughs> uh, and oh yeah. That that was the last super chat. I had another one highlighted, oh. but we already went. We already talked. Awesome. We already talked about the one I highlighted. So, mm -hmm. um, does anyone else have anything else they want to talk about before we head out? Uh, I mean, we have many things we can talk about. Like P Diddy's house just got raided by. Oh yeah, the Diddy FBI got raided. So, yeah. I still don't really know who P Diddy is, but I, I gather it's oh, controversial. Me, me neither. I don't know who that huh. is either. I've heard uh, of him. He's a rapper. He's a rapper. Oh, he doesn't rapist. make music anymore. Yeah, a rapist. Exactly. There you go. He's a rapist. He owns 21 kookaroos. Yeah. <laughs> Do you own 21 kookaroos? Y'all don't own one kookaroo. <laughs> you got to mind fuck the shit out of him. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I feel so like the char his character in Get Him to the Greek was yeah. him. Yeah. Pretty much, but without the the loving father uh, aspect that was kind of shoved in there. <laughs> oh yeah, they did shove a loving father aspect into that, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Well, yeah, yeah. So yeah. actually, remove the one soft spot that character had in the movie, and then that's yeah. probably <laughs> and that's probably yeah, that's one hundred. That's why it was so easy for him to hone in in that role. What did they say was in the drug that they handed Russell Brand or or whoever a, Jonah Hill's a character? Jeffrey. Well, yeah, uh, it, it was, was called like, a Jeffrey. It was like, uh, but weed, it had every peyote, cocaine, meth. It was like every Angel drug dust. you could think of. It was like every yeah. drug possible. Nice. And uh, I just remember Puff Daddy's Angel. character was smoking it. And um, they were like, oh, wait, we need to get him because they were trying to get out of there because it had gone insane. And they're like, it's not him. He's Jeffrey now. <laughs> and I'm Jeffrey. pretty sure. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that is p diddy in real life i also heard yep. that certain slang has changed to saying uh what no diddy yeah so instead of saying no homo you say no diddy we've uh we've adapted it in some chats I'm, I'm in already this is yeah. beyond ah. zoomer terminology i can't keep up <laughs> well you zoomers You're don't even know who he that? is you guys don't even know who P. Diddy is. <laughs> yeah, just kind of wild, in all honesty, because he's considered kind of one of the, the bigger names in American rap music, which is mm. wild. So Puff Diddler. Yeah. But do I sound like the kind of person who listens to rap? Yeah, I don't I don't listen to rap. So no, I listen to but, Kanye. That's it. <laughs> I mean, he, I only know the existence of things that are in front of me. Fair. True. <laughs> I don't know. Platoon, uh, you sound like a Thai uh, uh, oh, wow, speak English. Thai cop. Oh, wow, never mind. Whoa, <laughs> Tchaikovsky. Yeah, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> I told you I'm a Geico caveman. Jesus, <laughs> Pete visited Epstein Island. I bet he actually did. It was, um, it was all in relation to a sex trafficking probe that's going on right now. So they <laughs> raided his house in L.A. and the one he has in Miami. So I him and seen. Vince McMahon, huh? Mm -hmm. Find anything? Just two uh, separate sex traffickers. No clue. <laughs> but like, keep in mind, like, if he actually is doing that kind of stuff, then the, the way the FBI works is that they don't go in for evidence for trials and whatnot. They go in to get the evidence so that they can bury the story further. Right. So, um, because they just got they just got Tupac's killer too. Apparently, like a month allegedly, ago. Yeah. allegedly, yeah, allegedly, yeah, allegedly. Finally, dude, come on. I think <laughs> it would be um cool if we had Platoon read like some Wu Tang Clan lyrics. <laughs> Bro, go just one time. I, I wouldn't even say you have to laugh. Them. That fucking uh, stupid scuzzlebutt thing is that not enough? What? You know what? It is oh, yeah. the one year anniversary, sort of, of B sub. So I think that would be a very fitting way to close out this stream. Just, like, I just think so too. Stream. And like, it would be, it'll be funny to see if he reads, if he can censor in real time what he's reading and not say the N word that's in the lyrics. <laughs> oh, we can challenge him. Like, you have to read all this out loud right now, <laughs> really fast. <laughs> yeah, go. Like you're rapping. Oh. 
300 beats per minute go. Um, we don't have to do that. It's okay. Oh, thank God for that. No, we have to. We won't. No, yeah, we have to. You brought it up. It would be rude not to do it now. Next week. (laughs) Yeah, next week. Or no, uh, maybe we should cold open the show next week with Platoon reading Wu Tang Clan lyrics. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no, we should do it like uh like they did with um uh, Ben Shapiro reading off those like. The oh yeah 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 WAP. Minaj. yeah WAP we should do that yeah. but platoon I think that'd so be, too that'd be so, that'd be so gold I would rather read la- rap lyrics than than another Josh Brolin poem so uh, he know. has paid though so I think just because the man is paid fuck me probably <laughs> yeah and ask two dollars dude <laughs> or the Megan Fox poetry hold on oh, I'm trying to find me, more huh? of the yeah, that's yeah. That was that was cynic. Yeah, I was reading poetry in other people's uh, voices, including yours. I think, platoon. Dude, your <laughs> yeah, you Christopher did, uh, Walken, your Christopher Walken is legit solid. It's okay. Yeah. I hadn't done it in a couple of years. I don't think I, was, my like, jaw dropped. Run. My jaw, my run. jaw. Yeah, it. My jaw dropped. I was like, holy shit, that's good. Uh, Wisnelly, Wisnelly P. I don't fucking know. $20. Um, well, this is to, to Platoon. First versus by Inspected Deck in Triumph by Wu-Tang. I don't know what any of that means. I, I suspect <laughs> this is just punishing me for bullying chat earlier. <laughs> it's just, it's just so. come up and... Damn it. Knew I should have seen that coming. Oh, uh, okay. All right. right. I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, thank you for that super chat, by the way. Very kind of you. Um, okay. I have to do this. I'm pulling it up. Okay. If you could read this for us, Platoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I'm here for this. <laughs> uh, shit, is that super chat stuck on the screen? It yeah. is, yes. Oh, oh no, it's broken. We can't do it. Shit, we gotta go. Oh uh, no, I got oh, it. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> shimmy, shimmy, yay, shimmy, yo, shimmy, ah. <laughs> For for everyone, platoon. Okay. The good people paid money. Platoon said on February thirteenth, "This is not a poem." <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is who is? Is this Broden again? Oh, it is. It is. Okay. And this is for Florence Pugh. Okay, just just putting it out there right at the top. This isn't a poem. This is just three paragraphs of text. That's not the same thing. Where she looks matters, even with a sparkling veil over her face, her eyes shine a mischief that's hidden by her soft orange la- What? I'm gonna fucking laugh be orange. He's a little drunk. I heard a nice soft orange laugh. Always a laugh at the ready. A sun rises by a man lifting it over his head behind her. And it doesn't. And her shimmer on this stage becomes its own performance, though she is unaware. When Marilyn Monroe comes onto the silver screen for the first time, you know immediately that she will rise like this sun on this stage until someone or something calls for it to stop. Please. Uh, Like Marilyn, and even surrounded by the star-studded cast of Dune, you can feel her cells preparing for a thinner air, a higher ground. Her talent becomes her. She lies down between shots, splayed in her princess regalia. We are all tired, but she lies there without worry, and her composure is one of easy royalty. I think with this character either rubbing off or being incarnate already, she is destined to do a lava that nobody eventually will even dare approach. I don't even know what the fuck that means. <laughs> we spent bars we tonight, bro. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Beautiful. Well I'm, I'm satisfied now. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> keep Josh Brolin 100 feet away from Florence Pugh at all times, please. Or just any vaguely attractive person. Mm-hmm. Mind you, it's probably better than you know going full Diddy on them, so there is That's that. True, <laughs> yeah. At least they're all of-age people that he's writing these this poetry about. Did he Diddy uh, Timothy Chalamet? That is the question. Uh, well, well, if he did, then we're going to have words. And, <laughs> you know, he's... <laughs> Don't touch my man. <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy. God. That's Platoon's uh, one... Don't touch him. 
There is one final. I don't. Is Madam Web technically out of cinemas now? Because we did box office mm -hmm. predictions. I know it's over I've, my limit. I said ninety five. Well, I think I you were you closest, yeah. right? Um, so Madam Web. If we are saying that it's it's basically done, it earned just over ninety eight million dollars, which means that uh, in order of least bad, no, sorry, in order of worst to bad, no fucking words. I'm so tired. Worst to best <laughs> predictions. Backface and Vex wildly off with two hundred and ten million dollars. So you both get put in the bin. Andrew, one hundred and seventy-five million dollars. That's also completely <laughs> wrong. I said seventy-five so million dollars, which is like morally correct, but technically speaking, incorrect. And Cynic wins with ninety-five million dollars. I finally watched Madam Web. And and is the best movie of the year <laughs> so far. It's mm, so far, <laughs> so far, definitely a nominee, you know, Dude, it Will is shot. It's it's shot like an Instagram reel. Like, yes. Yeah, oh dude. It, it's like it's it uses uh, Instagram filters. It feels like, uh -huh, especially yeah. in that first few minutes. It, it's uh, way too orange in that and movie. blue. Yeah. Every problem in that movie is showcased. And then she goes minutes. blind. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like, oh yeah, the character's supposed to be blind by the end of the movie. I, don't know, I didn't even fireball. I didn't even face. <laughs> Mario just chucked a fireball at her. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, I I didn't even intend on watching. I was chilling in Discord with some friends playing video games, and they're like, "Have you heard of this game? This not this game. This movie, Madam Web." And I was like, "Oh God, no!" <laughs> they're like, "Let's watch it." <laughs> and I was like, "All right, Let's buckle up." <laughs> um. Well, I think that wraps it up for Beast Up for this week. Uh, Vex and I will be back, and probably Andrew too, on Thursday to discuss whatever the fuck happens in pop culture between now and then on the Blue Room, which is on my channel. Uh, if anyone hasn't noticed, Beast Up is exclusive to Platoon's channel now. Um, but yeah, I'd like to thank the panel and uh, start with you, Gooch, and just see what you're up to and where everyone can find you. Yeah, can, yeah. Can uh, I what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. What's a, what's a coach? Tonight? Yeah. Well, I got to leave. I got a show in about 45. Um, yeah. You can catch me at Diabolical Souls Presents, uh, where we do, well, well, I do um, interviews and reviews, animated series reviews. Um, Tuesday night, tomorrow night, we're going to continue with Scavenger's Reign. Uh, we're doing episode three. My co host below me here, Vex. Um, we have a big panel there. Uh, come check us out 10 o'clock Eastern. Uh, Wednesday, I'm doing an interview. I'm doing Orbital Bacon. Uh, well, I'm not doing Orbital Bacon. I'm having <laughs> Orbital Bacon. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm having Orbital Bacon on. Um, and we're, I'm going to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one with him. You can catch him on YouTube. He has his own uh, channel. He has a lot of animated shows from the 80s and 90s. Uh, that'll be a great uh, conversation. And then Thursday's the premiere of... Um, cyberpunk edge runners we're going to be starting that off with episode one at 10 o'clock eastern on my channel again we just finished with arcane which was a blast we had a lot of fun doing that and then uh, i'll be floating around uh, you can catch me on saturday night hypnosis i'm usually hanging out there with the crew and uh, i'll be you know whatever i get asked on to so i'm off all week i'll be editing and doing a bunch of stuff so spring break so that's awesome. where I'm at. Break. And I just passed 5K. So oh, that, was big, that was a big awesome. yeah. Well done. Yeah. I yeah. remember when you were only at like 500. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. It's, yeah. That, it was, that's really cool, man. That's awesome. It's they the anime, so the animated, yeah. The animated series reviews is like, uh, it was really taken off. And uh, I think everyone on the panel that's joined me, I've had a blast with them. Like, it's great conversations. Last Tuesday, we had a phenomenal conversation about Scavenger's Reign. That was like one of one of the one of my favorites. And then, um, yeah, it's just been. And hopefully, Cynic, you can come on and join us at one of these points. So, I, I just don't want to go on. Like, if I haven't watched it, I'll just be a. I'll be dead weight. I, and I hadn't watched yeah. you know, Arcane or anything. Or you know. no, no, it's all it's all good. But, but yeah, you've not been Arcane asking, either. No, fuck no. <laughs> Why was I bullying? <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah. He was bullying, was bullying, bullying you the whole time. I should have been bullying you. Yeah, I uh, well, I, I was know. like fucking hiding in the background. I shouldn't even have mentioned my fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, season two, you're definitely hopping on. So yeah, I'll have to uh, watch. Yeah. Season one's only like nine episodes, right? Yeah. 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 So 40, 40, 45 minutes each. It's not okay. that long for each one. You All and right. Vex need to get on it. Yeah. 
Vex. Uh, hold on, you're uh, hold on, Arcane or Edge Runners? Uh, Arcane. Well, both. Which one? Which one to watch? Arcane first. Okay, yeah. When Arcane season two comes out, I'll watch Arcane season one. There you go. You're so there difficult. you go. <laughs> and Vex, what are you up to? Where can we find you besides being my uh, co-host on Thursdays? And oh, just to answer a question about our show, Vex, they asked what time? Is, what time is it at, Vex? 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 6 oh, p.m. You. Central Time or 3 p.m. Mountain Standard slash Pacific Time. That's pretty good because I don't remember any of that. It's okay. <laughs> That's why I have a calendar. There you go. Don't worry. I got you. Uh, I will be on MMM on Cannoli Sluts channel right after this. Uh, we, are we are doing a review of Ghostbusters, the original film from 1984. Oh. Uh, Gooch is going to be there. Uh, and then Tuesday, Scavenger's Reign, episode three review on Gooch's channel. Thursday, The Blue Room. Um... Yeah, I guess yeah, everyone's already said it. Yeah, that that's it. I'm uh I'm working on a video. It's coming. I'm just trying to get over that that hump right now. That's it. But thank you for having me as always. It's a pleasure. Um I hope you've enjoyed my new avatar. Uh this is what I would look like as a man as the Joker. So Yeah, you uh. keep it fresh every week. You've been radicalized. Yeah. I like next this one week. I'm going to be the, the Simpsons time. version of me. The last yeah, one I, I had, I can go into the video and stick a black bar after the swastika test. <laughs> for, like, yeah, 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 I noticed three that. Three hours to do. <laughs> what you, three hours to do that? What? No, I'm exaggerating, but it did take a long time. <laughs> Man. Well, you get to render sorry. the fucking video and every. You no wonder know, you have an like editor. It's such a because it's because when you change when you change the layout, it doesn't like jump; it moves. So you can't just cut the bar and move it to a different place because then the swastikas will just fly across the screen and then they end up behind <laughs> the bar. So you have to actually animate the bar to move with the swastikas, which is just an ass. Or track it. I don't know how that works. I don't either. I don't know how tracking works in video editing at all. Amateurs. Chat bullion. <laughs> Don't you uh, guys both have over a hundred thousand subscribers? Imagine not well, being when it comes to editing. <laughs> to be fair, when it comes to editing, I find that it's all about timing, and simplicity is not necessarily a bad thing. You listen, okay? YouTube 101, learn how to track tits. All right, <laughs> <laughs> sound advice, Andrew. Sound advice. Uh, and Andrew, what are you up to? Where can we find you next? uh i'll probably be on the blue room thursday uh still working on temple of doom coming around may 8th and then after that i don't know what i'm gonna do uh velma true velma well i <laughs> yeah, might velma. i might do velma in but well velma comes out before right i just looked april. it up and it doesn't have an official day okay. yet it says april Okay. April twenty second, I, I believe. Yeah, I might, twenty first or second in my head. I, I think, might. Yeah. Uh, I might just uh, quick do like a one off for a week and then continue working on uh, uh, Temple of Doom. But yeah, that's about it for me. Uh, yeah, you'll probably have to be a guest on Thursday just to keep consistency. So. We have a new person coming on Thursday, and I'm gonna fan girl out. The, this is this is a guy, man. Yeah, yeah, no, a it's brand good. new, uh, a brand new face. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. This was a Vex find, and uh, I watched some of his videos. Pretty good. So we invited him on, and he'll be there Thursday. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks everyone for coming on. And Platoon, it's your it's your channel. Uh, you can oh, yeah. show us out if you want. <laughs> yeah, you do the yeah. work. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wait. What's if we done what you're doing? Oh, um, I don't know yet. Okay. I have I have one. to have a video come out like by the end of the week, and I have no fucking clue what it is yet. I haven't made up my mind. That's why I was like trying to choose between the three movies, and then decided none of them. I, I just there were like eight different things I wanted to talk about, and I I cannot decide which one it's gonna be. So, uh, mm. we'll see. Good choice to have though. Um and yeah, I'm I'm probably gonna skip the Ghostbusters thing because I don't have time, and it'll be. June will be the next thing from me. Whether it's a part one of two or just one big long thing, I do not know. Um, but something at some point, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, and then Elmer, yay! Um, and Revel Moon, Money. Bless yay! But uh, I, yeah, that's it. 
I guess. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was interrupting you. Um, yeah, you fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there will be one in this one, but I, the next couple won't. So, um, but I mean, the way I think about it when it comes to like sponsorship spots and stuff is that like, I don't, um, like you can just skip it. There's a timestamp. If you don't yeah. like it, you can just go ahead and skip it. But like advertising revenue on YouTube is so fucking up and down. It sucks. But this creates stability. So like, you know, I think it's an even trade. Like you can skip over the ad. It's time stamped. Um, and then I also don't have to think too much about ad revenue, which could be fucking all over the place. Like it can be good. It can be terrible. Um, and if a video underperforms like this, make sure that I can stay stable. So um, that's why the timestamps are there, though. So just click and fucking skip right on. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, yeah, that's it for me. So cracking. Yeah, no, heartily recommend that approach. Um, sometimes, you know, YouTubers do also need to get paid to live, uh, you know, so <laughs> if you want no. and enjoy videos, uh, sometimes you're going to have to put up with the occasional ad. But I think we try and make them yeah. at least funny. And if not funny, then skippable. Um, that is that is it for the end of the show. So thank you very much for chat, uh, as usual, for sticking with us. Thank you so much to the lovely panelists for being lovely panelists. We shall see you on Thursday for the Blue Room, and then um, yeah, probably this time next week for BSUP again. So uh, see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.